Welcome everybody to a brand new Blu-ray and DVD out and about video today and this week sees the release of the action fantasy video game adaptation Bloodbath. Mortal Kombat, hitting store shelves, along with the crime thriller The Wrath of Man, the 2000 rock and roll coming of age classic Almost Famous is hitting 4K, and Scream Factory is releasing a collector's edition of the 2005 horror remake House of Wax, plus much, much more. So let's go see the deals, exclusives, and we or at our first location, Walmart. So let's go in and see what they got. All right, everybody, we are in at Walmart. First thing I'm seeing is they got this pretty damn cool display for Mortal Kombat. Yeah, look at that, man. Pretty cool, actually, not bad, look at that. On the side there with, with some of the scenes from the movie. The other side as well. Nice, cool. Yeah, it's pretty sweet, man. You don't get to really see many stands anymore. You don't really, so when there is, I gotta show it off, guys. I mean, come on, it's too good not to. They do have the Blu-ray digital of Mortal Kombat for 1996. They have the DVD for 1796, and they also have this only at Walmart exclusive DVD three film collection set. I actually really like that with the symbol right right there. I even think that's really cool. You get. Mortal Kombat, Mortal Kombat Annihilation, and the reboot of Mortal Kombat. Very nice, actually. Nice little three-film collection set. Well, that's if you like Annihilation. Ah, you'd be in the minority. <laughs> oh, boy. But not bad little three-film collection, dare I say. Not bad at all, and only at Walmart. So if you're looking for a three-film collection set, uh, well, there, there you go. Walmart has your fix right there, man. Now, I did get a chance to see Mortal Kombat in the movie theaters. I saw it with Bob. We ended up doing a spoiler review. You can catch it on the movie review playlist. I'll put a link down below in the description if you want to hear our full and complete thoughts on the movie. And we were excited about Mortal Kombat. In fact, I think a lot of people, truth be told, were very excited about Mortal Kombat, man. I mean... Why not? It's Mortal fucking Kombat, dude. I mean, seriously. I mean, I used to play the games way back in the day when they first started, man. So did Bob. And we were obsessed with this stuff. I think everybody was. I mean, the characters and the world, the, the fatalities. I mean, it was gruesome. You had never seen anything like it. It was revolutionary. It was awesome. And, you know, after a while, I had sort of died off of being a video game lover. I, you know, I mean, I occasionally play every now and again, but not really to the extent that I used to. But the games became more popular. They made movies out of them. But franchises start to fade. Things happen. And some of the movies ended up not turning out as great as they hoped. And interest sort of waned. Not really in the video game, but more in the movies. And over time, there was other iterations of Mortal Kombat. There were, you know, animated movies that happened, like Scorpion's Revenge not too long ago, which honestly is a pretty damn good Mortal Kombat movie, all things considered. That's really, really great, man. And they've had some sort of, sort of B-movie Mortal Kombat stuff here and there. But as far as like a big theatrical Mortal Kombat movie, it hasn't happened in a really long time. So this was a huge movie event. Something like Godzilla vs. Kong would be. And people really wanted to check this thing out. I mean, the trailers looked cool. And you definitely wanted to dive into that world. And with all the new inventions in sort of movie making, it was about time to bring Mortal Kombat to the screen yet again, dare I say. The end result, however, uh, look, I'm, I'm going to be real, man. I mean, there are things here that I like. I think some of the fatalities are really cool here. I mean, it is bloody. It is gruesome at times. They do take advantage of 
the movie making capabilities they really do and some of the characters end up being kind of cool at moments but there's a lot of things in this movie that i think are real missed opportunities i mean mortal kombat is usually about the mortal kombat tournament and we didn't even get the tournament in this movie that was a big major major huge letdown that was pretty damn bad man i mean on top of that i thought some of the characters were kind of lame and useless and didn't really add anything to the story i thought they didn't really take advantage of some of the powers that these characters have and i thought a lot of things in this movie were underused and utter underutilized they didn't really take advantage of the mortal kombat brand it, it, it really felt like when i was watching this movie it almost felt like a a prequel to an actual mortal kombat movie it didn't feel like a mortal kombat film to me i mean some of the battle and fight scenes are kind of cool like the opening scene in the movie the opening fight scene is amazing and that's a fantastic fight a action sequence it really gets you going and it's amazing the problem is the rest of the movie never lives up to that original fight scene at the beginning it just doesn't so you're literally sitting there and you were so hyped up from that first fight scene that everything else just sort of pales in comparison they sort of set up the pieces they set up the world the problem is is that they don't really take advantage of it and i feel like they'll take advantage of it in a sequel the problem is is like why didn't they take advantage of it in this movie if it's really successful of course you're going to make a sequel and then you could just add on to it but this felt like a lame duck attempt at a mortal kombat movie rather than actually being a really kick-ass mortal kombat film with all the advances in technology with all of the great sort of fodder that the video games have given the fan base o over the years and all of the creativity and the kills and the unique characters there was a chance to make something really amazing and really fantastic and it just ended up being a letdown in a lot of ways there are some really good things in this movie there's a lot of really good things to build on in hopefully maybe a sequel that will deliver the goods but as far as this movie delivering i think what fans wanted that was a long ways off i know people do really like this movie they do really think it's it's awesome and hey more power to them but as an old school mortal kombat fan i was expecting a little bit better and this one just pales in comparison it really really does shame because it had a lot going for it and it just didn't quite fit the bill hate to say it but somebody needs to put a fatality on this motherfucker <sighs> better luck next time let's put it that, that that way guys let's hope this is the sequel d delivers let's hope but not bad here at Walmart. I mean, you got the Blu-ray, you got the DVD, and a little bit of three film collection love. I will say this, the reboot is better than Mortal Kombat Annihilation, but then again, most movies are better than Mortal Kombat Annihilation. It's not saying much. <laughs> not bad at all for Walmart. Not bad at all so far. Hmm. Let's see what else Walmart's got. And then over in the new release section for Walmart here, I'm seeing all the same regular usual suspects, Chaos, Walk-In, Voyagers, Raya, Long Halloween, GVK, Nobody, Awesome, The Unholy. Yeah, I'm seeing a lot of the same similar suspects that we've seen uh, for a f some weeks now, guys. They do have the 4k of gi joe the rise of cobra and they do have the 4k of gi joe retaliation now i showed you guys that they did come out with the blu-rays and the dvd copies they came out with those and they had the movie cash in them but they also ended up releasing the 4k editions i believe this week as well great you can see Bruce Will Will Willis with CGI in the back of a truck sh shooting a big ass gun trying to relive his glory days from Die Hard. Just what I wanted. <laughs>
Oh, baby. So they do have the 4K editions over here as well as the regular Blu-rays and everything. I mean, the Blu-ray is $9.96, and I believe these ones are around like $14.96 or so. So like a $5 more than what the Blu-ray is. I mean, if you already got them, why need to upgrade? But if you don't... I mean, that's not a bad price, actually, for 4K, to be honest, honest with you. I mean, I'm not a hugest fan of the movies themselves, but, I mean, if you're a fan of them, $14.96 ain't half bad. I mean, they got those. They also end up having the G.I. Joe 2 movie collection on DVD as well for $14.96. So, if you only wanted them on DVD, well, there you go, a eh? Two movie G.I. Joe action spectacular collection pack. <laughs> oh, sure, why not? And trust me, when Snake Eyes comes out on physical, you'll have a three movie collection set. Guarantee it, guys. They have that. They have Percy versus Goliath as well, which we end up seeing last week. So they have some stuff here, not in abundance, but small amount they also in this other section have the 4k of space jam finally i mean it only took them about a week or so to get there but they finally did it guys which is again mega mega awesome nostalgia feels on this one man i don't know i mean part of me kind of wants to revisit space jam just for the sake of re-watching it after so many decades but there's also a part of me that doesn't want to watch it because I remember so many really great things about Space Jam just as a kid. And uh, I don't know, am, am I going to love it just as much as I did when I was a kid? I'd like to think so, but sometimes revisiting stuff, most of the time reinforces that you really love it. And other times reinforces that maybe it wasn't as good as you thought it was. Uh, I don't know, guys. I mean, I kind of do. I mean, I really like this one, and I definitely will watch the sequel. But do I think the sequel is going to be as good as the first one? Well, if my nostalgia reminds me, Space Jam was really great, so I don't know if that other one's going to hold a candle. But I guess we're about to find out soon enough, aren't we, guys? So they finally do have that as well. And all the stuff over here is the same usual suspect as well. Tenet, Honest Thief, Bill and Ted antebellum little things stuff like that so they have this section over here with at least having the space jam 4k finally they have that and then of course a little bit more physical media love over here but a lot of the same old stuff we've been seeing time and time again well hey at least they had one new thing this week and for walmart you know seeing as how we've been dealing with certain weeks where we've had nada nothing zippity doo dah. I'll take it. Let's head out. Honestly, guys, this Walmart is more miss than it is hit. I think I've proven that week in and week out as of late, haven't I? So when I came in here, I was like, okay, there's a lot of stuff that they should have. I know they won't have, but this is a big release week because of Mortal Kombat, baby. I mean, if they didn't have Mortal Kombat, there's no hope for this place, damn it. There's no hope. So, at least they had that. I mean, it was a big enough re release. They have a cool little standee. So, hey, they at least delivered on the one thing that pretty much they should have had anyway. So, there you go on that. I mean, nothing else majorly new except for like a 4K upgrade here and there on G.I. Joe. Finally getting in some Space Jam love. Not a lot, but hey... They at least had the big major release of the week and that is at least the the least thing they can do just the least thing they could do and they did pull that one off so gotta give them somewhat of a credit even though nothing else well a little bit goes a long way and with this walmart oh well, there's been weeks where we've seen nothing baby so one major new release this week i'll take it all things considered, I will take it, guys. <sighs> but there is more new releases out this week. There is. So how about we blow this pop stand and try to find more physical media love. All right, everybody. We are at our second location, Target. But before we go in, 
I gotta talk to you guys about something. So, last week, I showed you the physical media disc for Defending Jacob, which was, by the way, exclusively on Apple+. Plus. And if you didn't have Apple Plus and you couldn't exactly watch it, well, now you have an opportunity to. But there's an interesting article. Defending Jacob series is the first Apple TV Plus content to get a physical disc release. Now, it makes the first Apple TV Plus original title to get a physical media disc release. Now, it debuted on Apple streaming service in April of 2020, more than a year ago. And given that Apple TV has been out for almost two years at this point, it seemed fair to assume that Apple had maintained release exclusivity over its original TV shows and movies, requiring everyone watching to have a Apple TV Plus subscription. However, the physical media release of Defending Jacob shows that this is not a strict hard and fast rule. In general, you would expect that Apple would want to keep its content exclusive to its streaming service and nowhere else to encourage TV Plus subscriptions. However, it's never confirmed the nature of its platform exclusivity, and it also depends on its deals with partners that may vary from time to time. In this case, evidently Paramount has retained the physical media rights for Defending Jacob in order for it to be made available on disc. It even includes previously unseen bonus content and special features, but the disc does not appear to feature any Apple branding at all, which is very telling, by the way. So if there's something on Apple TV that takes your fancy, but you are averse to signing up for yet another streaming service, there's now some hope that your favorite show could be made available elsewhere down the line. I know some movie buffs have been wanting Blu-ray versions of Apple TV movies like Greyhound and Wolfwalkers added to their collection, and... Patience may pay off. Indeed, it might, guys. So this is very interesting, right? Because we're now in a little bit of, mm, dare I say, a little bit of a uh, game of chicken, dare I say. And, and I think we are, if, if you really think about it. Because, and this is how I really think about this. So I've told you guys that basically these streaming services are all about content, content, content. They need to keep the content as their own exclusive content for you to stay on their subscription service. Seems pretty simple, right? But what about a physical media disc? I mean, let's be real. There are so many streaming services to apply to. And at a certain point, it becomes a little bit of a clusterfuck in a lot of ways. I mean, there are so many services to sign up for and so much money that you have at your disposal. How many are you really going to go for? I maybe have like three or four at this point, And even that seems a lot to, to me. So there is a little bit of a conundrum. And I've never understood the idea why they wouldn't put out a physical media disc. I mean, why doesn't Netflix create their own brand where they where they can put out their own disc content so they're making money not only through the streaming service but also through physical media as well? They win on both fronts. It's a win-win situation. Why wouldn't you do that? I mean, that makes perfect sense to me, but then again, not every executive has my smarts, guys. <laughs> but look, man, I, I mean, I think... See, I think in a perfect world, Apple probably is thinking to themselves, we want this content for ourselves. But Paramount, being smart, has also realized that, look, this is, this is content that is exclusive to you. We still own this content that we're making, that we are giving to you lending, so to speak. So you're making money off of our product. Yes, we're getting money from you, but we could also be making money ourselves off of the physical disc. So they're thinking smart. And a lot of stuff, like if you remember when Cloverfield Paradox came out and everyone was like, oh my God, this is exclusive to, to Netflix, it's huge. And then a year later, it came out on physical because Paramount held on to the rights so they could release it on physical and get a little bit money on, on their end as much as they're getting through somebody else as well. I mean, it's all about, it's all about being smart in this game. And... Does this mean that everything that you love that's on streaming is going to get to streaming and just never come on disc? Well, that's not always going to be the case. Defending Jacob proves that.
but is everything going to come on disc? Well, as far as Disney Plus is concerned, Marvel has ended up saying, yeah, those TV shows, they're not coming on disc. However, they say that now, a year, maybe two years from now, that might be a different story. It depends on the changing of entertainment. It changes on how customers view their media. Right now, digital and subscription services are the in thing. It's the popular thing to do, but a little bit of time from now, that might change. Physical media might be back in. I mean, physical media is not dying. I mean, it's not at death's door, but at the same time, it's not exactly flourishing either. So, I think it benefits Disney, and I think it benefits a lot of these companies to think of both fronts, digital and physical. The problem is, is that everyone is so in love with digital at this point, they're not really thinking about the physical aspect. And I think that's why I think Paramount is being really clever here, saying, hey, look, we'll lend you our stuff. But at the same time, we're putting out a release of it ourselves so that we can actually make a little bit more more money on the back end than what we're already making. I mean, yes, it has to do with money, but it has to do with the deals. It's all very tricky and very complicated. But at the end of the day, does this give me hope in the future for exclusive digital content to finally get a physical release? Yes. I mean, look at Criterion. They released stuff that was only exclusive to Netflix. So it is possible, but is everything going to get there? Maybe not, but it does give me a little bit of hope, guys. I am curious as to what you guys think about that. Definitely let me know. In the meantime, well, it's a decent physical media release with uh, some pretty solid titles, all things considered. One thing at Walmart, but maybe more at Target? Well, let's hope. How about we go in and check it out? All right, we are in at Target, and hey, there is some new release love this week indeed, guys, and we are seeing Mortal Kombat love, the 4K Blu-ray digital for $29.99, the Blu-ray digital for $22.99, the DVD digital for $19.99, I was almost getting worried for a little bit, because when we were at Walmart, I was like, wait a minute, they, they're not doing any new and interesting artwork? Oh, it's just the same artwork on the Blu-ray and the DVD, but oh no, they are doing slightly different artwork on the 4K. Nice, look at that. That's cool. I actually probably prefer this artwork here. I mean, I like that artwork. It is cool, but this is just a little bit better, man. I don't know, just a little bit more kick-ass. It's nice to see a little bit different artwork on the 4K. Sometimes it's all the same artwork, and it's kind of dull, but it's nice to get a little bit of variant from time to time. Nice, man. Now... As I said, I am an old school Mortal Kombat lover, an old school Mortal Kombat fan, and I remember when that 95 movie came out, man, Mortal Kombat directed by Paul W.S. Anderson, I remember that, that was like hype, that was like hype city, baby, that was like highly anticipated, man. I mean, people were all over that in a big bad way, and I could see why, it was, it was like, it was like images out of a video game come to life i mean i mean just something that people were just ready to eat up man it, it it looked cool at the time it really did and watching the movie honestly it was awesome i mean that first mortal kombat movie is great i mean yes does it entirely 100 percent hold up today no not exactly i mean especially with some of the movie magic technology yeah, it doesn't hold a candle to some of the more modern stuff, some of the effects, yeah, you name it. But it is still really, really great, man. And I think it's still really creative with, with the kills and the action and the martial arts. I think it's actually still a really solid video game movie to this day, man. I think that's still really great. And then it seems like everything else has sort of went down the rabbit hole with Mortal Kombat. I mean, then they did Mortal Kombat Annihilation because money talks, bullshit walks, and that first Mortal Kombat movie made a shitload of money. So, I mean, come on, they had to come back. But Annihilation is not nearly as good as the first Mortal Kombat movie. I mean, it's talk about steps down. It's major steps down. 
uh, pale comparison, I, I would say. I mean, they did that. They also did a couple of TV shows. I mean, they did Mortal Kombat Conquest, which had, strangely enough, Kristana Loken in it. It was okay. I mean, they also had that uh, other one, Mortal Kombat Legacy. Yeah, I remember that one with um, Casper Van Dien and Mark Dacascos. Yeah, uh, that was okay, too. I mean, those TV shows weren't exactly the greatest. I mean, they weren't as good as the movie, but they were just they were just okay. Nah, they, 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 they were what they were, man. I mean, you also had a lot of animated stuff, too. Like, like I said, Scorpion's Revenge, great animated movie, great Mortal Kombat movie, and brutal as hell for an animated film awesome one there's supposed to be another animated one coming out sometime soon as well which i'm definitely lo looking forward to i mean mortal kombat is perfect in video game form i mean it is amazing i mean the the kills and the fatalities it, it's awesome and you know the, the fact that you get to do all these crazy wild moves it's amazing and i think the animation really works for mortal kombat it really works in a big bad way you can really do some amazing stuff and and some wild kills and and sequences some really bizarre stuff that you can take directly from the video game and put it in animation live action does mortal kombat work better in live action versus some of the other formats because i don't know if it really does i mean like i said that 95 movie i think still to this day is the best live action iteration of mortal kombat that is out there and i think everything else has sort of been kind of not as good or not reaching the levels of the video game it's so hard when when a video game is as dynamic as that one is it's hard to replicate it on the big screen live action and sometimes that's easier said than done, and this movie kind of proves that. I mean, with all the movie magic out there, with all the money and the billions of dollars that was spent, it still feels not as good as it could be, and it still feels like it's shortchanging the fans. <sighs> Live action is not easy to pull off with any fantasy-based sort of action spectacular, but Mortal Kombat is, is probably one of the hardest, man. I mean... That 95 movie was perfect in a lot of ways. And will we ever get a, a great counterpart to that? I don't know if this movie is really it. It's decent, but it's not as good as it could be. It feels like it's a precursor to a better movie. And maybe that will be the sequel, but for the meantime, this one just didn't fit the bill. Live action is great, and it works for certain books to movie adaptations and other sort of material turned movie but Mortal Kombat has not exactly had the most easiest road to live action wonder what you guys think and finally we are seeing the blu-ray digital of Wrath of Man for $22.99 yes a little Jason Statham love never heard nobody <laughs> definitely did not man now i got a chance to watch this on amazon prime i really wanted to watch this in the movie theaters but it just slightly passed me by man ah damn it but i definitely did want to check it out man because i am an occasional jason statham fan i'm not the biggest jason statham lover but when he does a really great role, he does a really great role. So I had to definitely check this one out. Basically, it's about this guy that's hired to protect this this money. And, you know, just it's a mundane job. You know, you take the truck, you get the money, you drive back. However, sometimes the mundane can turn into the deadly. And what I mean by that is I mean that basically... Every now and again, these people get get robbed, they're at gunpoint, and these people who are supposed to be badass turns into complete and utter sissies because, well, when there's a gun in your face, what the hell are you going to do? However, if you're Jason Statham, what are you going to do? Well, you're going to beat the living shit out of people is what the hell you're going to do, man. And so this guy starts to beat the hell out of people. He's killing these these criminals like left and right and everyone's like oh my god who the hell is this guy and that's the complication of this movie is who he is what is he exactly there to do and who is he finding to exact revenge that's where this movie really goes and it's a very interesting and fascinating movie 
at around like almost two hours it is a long and very involved film now i got to admit i do really love statham here i mean he is somebody who is very stoic he's somebody who is very badass in this role you can tell when he has that glint in his eye of revenge you can just see it encompassing every bone of his body and i think that's one of the reasons i love statham as much as he does man because when he goes for a role and it's one of those sort of i'm taking revenge roles man is he good at it and this is one of those ones that is really solid with with him and i like the idea that they treat this guy you know like this sort of he he's a newbie he pretends to be badass ah oh, he, he he's nothing we're more badass than he is and they totally basically turn turn these guys into complete and utter punks and i love it i absolutely do man and i love the story the idea of the revenge that this guy takes on on these people and the reasons why he's doing what he's doing this guy is not exactly a good person he's not a good guy he's not trying to you know defend the money or he's not trying to you know be the best employee in the world he's out to kill pe people and anybody who gets in his way oh you're gonna regret it <laughs> absolutely and they do man the one thing i'll say for this movie to be honest with you guys the one thing i definitely will say about it is that it is very complicated and it does go back and forth like there's a certain amount of the movie that basically it it gets you to a certain point in the film where he's exacting revenge and then what it does is that it basically backtracks it backtracks into his backstory statham's and what he was doing and why the circumstances happened the way it did then it bank it backtracks to the the criminals themselves and what they were doing and how they ended up getting in Jason Statham's way. So there's a lot of backtracking that goes on with this film. And sometimes it's hard to keep track of exactly what's going on and who's who and why are they doing this revenge and what are they doing it for. There's a lot of complications and sometimes that kind of waters down the film. It brings it down a little bit. I mean, the, the movie's great, but the complications in the story kind of kill it. But that being said, the action definitely does take it up a notch. I mean, the whole end sequence action stuff where they're robbing the the trucks and trying to get this big score and like the huge giant shootout that's going on, like all the shootout stuff that's happening is wild and it's crazy and it's really great, great a action. So the action is really good here. Some of the characters are a little less impressive. Others are completely useless. Statham is awesome here plot overcomplicated but overall it is a really solid dark and uncompromising m movie and i got to appreciate it it doesn't pull any punches and sometimes that definitely makes a great statham movie wouldn't you agree and i completely forgot the spongebob movie is out as well the spongebob movie sponge on the run <laughs> <laughs> oh, for seventeen ninety nine the DVD for fourteen ninety nine as well. Oh, good God, SpongeBob is back. <laughs> Actually, what am I talking about? He never left. Oh man. Okay, look, I I have never understood the SpongeBob love. I I never have, man. I never got into SpongeBob. Then again, I never really tried to. I mean, my girlfriend loves Spongebob, some of my friends love Spongebob, and I'm like, it's one of those characters where I think you just love the ridiculousness of it, or some people just decide to smoke a little ganja and get incredibly high and are like, Spongebob... <laughs> Oh my god. Uh, I think that's what happened when when the creator actually created the damn thing. Oh my god, man. Oh, what is this about? Let's see. SpongeBob SquarePants, his best friend Patrick, and the Bikini Bottom Gang. <laughs> that's actually a thing. O okay. When SpongeBob's beloved pet snail Gary goes missing. <gasps> no. A path of clues leads SpongeBob and Patrick to the powerful King. Poseidon, who is Gary held captive in the, in the lost city of Atl 
Oh, I, I thought it was. I thought it was going to be the Lost City of Atlantis. No, it's just the Lost City of Atlantic City. Oh, damn. <laughs> On the mission to save Gary, SpongeBob and his pals team up to a heroic and hilarious journey when they discover nothing is stronger than the power of friendship. Oh, of course. There's. I forgot. There's life lessons in SpongeBob. My bad. Oh man. <sighs> you know what? Look. I gotta give Spongebob credit, because it's incredibly popular. I mean, it is. Spongebob is majorly, majorly popular, man. It's nuts how popular Spongebob actually is. I mean, for an animated sponge under the sea, the fact that it's, it's like, spawned all this crazy merchandise, and the movies, and the shows... And, I mean, even, like, music soundtracks, for Christ's sake. I mean, my God, man. I mean, this thing is like a gold mine. Who would have ever thought of, of a talking animated sponge? <laughs> but seriously, I don't know. Should I get into SpongeBob? I don't know. I, I mean, I'm, I'm getting older. Is SpongeBob really going to be my thing? I, who knows? I mean, there's a lot of adults, older adults, that really love SpongeBob, man. It's kind of wild to me to think of that, that... I mean, for something I thought that was only for kids, it turned into this whole thing that even adults love. It's nuts, man. I mean, I gotta admit, I love the quirky, and I love the weird, and SpongeBob kind of fits into that. I don't know, man. I don't know. Oh, could SpongeBob, like, grip its its weird, spongy hands on me? God, I hope not. Oh, Lord. Is it worth it? Is it not? I mean, boy, boy, man. I mean, SpongeBob is something that people really love, so maybe it's worth it. Who the hell knows? But my God, man. Oh, the sponge is alive and well in the hearts and minds of a hell of a lot, a lot of people. God bless that talking sponge. <laughs> and the Bikini Bottom gang, apparently. Oh, Lord. What do you guys think of SpongeBob? Let me know, man. You got to. But not banned this week. I mean, only one release over at Walmart. But hey, we got three here. Not bad. And some 4K love. Can't be beat. A little bit better than I was expecting. Though Target has kind of pulled through as of late. Not surprised. Let's head out. Ah, good old Target. They actually kind of pulled through yet again this week, man. I mean... Again, it's not the most crazy, wild, amazing physical media week of all time. However, there is some big name titles. And Target definitely supplied it. And it also gave us a little SpongeBob love. Which, I suppose, is never a bad thing. Sure. <laughs> Why not, man? Oh, and they're also having a little bit of sale love as well. I'm noticing they have... Barb and Star on sale for $12.99. Get out of here. They do. That is just too fucking high. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. And actually, they have some sale stuff over here as well. They have some, some sale love over here. They're, they're doing a sale for, like, Tom and Jerry, which is still way too high. They got the curtain on sale, Chaos Walking. Good luck getting rid of that stock. And some Wonder Woman 84 love that they're trying to sell. Good luck on that one, too. We'll see if anybody bites on any of those guys. But not bad physical media release love here at Target. Not amazing, but they definitely delivered. And, hey, when it comes to Target, it has been a bit of a gamble over the years. But, honestly, they've been doing pretty well. And this week... I think continues a streak. I don't know what you guys think, but I think they're doing all right. Not half bad, in, in my humble opinion. I mean, the physical media section could be a hell of a lot more plentiful, but all things considered, they've been doing their job. And I greatly appreciate it. Trust me, I greatly do. Hope you guys do too. Let's head to the next location. Hopefully more physical media love to come. All right, everybody. We are at our third location the second Walmart. I'm going to go in and check out if there's any interesting indie titles worth checking out. If there is, I'll bring it back to Film Fan 108 HQ and show it off to each and every one of you. But before I do that, I got to talk about a movie trailer with you guys. Oh, I woke up this morning.
and got yourself a gun bow down 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 but down but down 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 the soprano the prequel the many things of newer yeah 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 baby oh my god we're finally getting more sopranos in our lives man yes with the prequel the many saints of newark oh man oh man Wow, did I ever think this was going to be a reality? So, so look, I used to be a huge Sopranos fan. Uh, season 1 through 4, to me, are probably amazing, fantastic. Anything after that, mm, I, I still like it. I'm not in love with, with it, but I've always really appreciated The Sopranos, man. I've loved the characters. I've, I've loved the comedy. I've I've loved the sort of thrills and the sort of who can you trust, who can you not trust, the the drama of it. I've always thought it was really amazing, man. And you know, it, it is definitely. I mean, rest in peace, James Gandolfini. The, the man deserved to be around much longer than he did. But I mean, that was as an actor his crowning achievement. I think anybody could r agree with that. And I remember. You know, after the finale happened and all the craziness of the fin finale, they went to the creator, David Chase, and they said, hey, are we ever going to get a movie? What's going to happen with, you know, Tony and, and, and the diner and everything? He's like, no, you're never going to get a movie. What ends up happening at the end of that series in the diner and, and it cuts to black, you don't know whether the person coming in is an enemy or a friend. Whether they just sit there enjoying their onion rings, you will never get an exact answer. And I kind of love that. I, I really do, man. But a lot of people got pissed off. Oh, my God, we want more Sopranos. And David Chase is like, yeah, this is never going to happen. And there was always talk about maybe a prequel, maybe a movie. It could be a prequel, maybe not, but it's something. And now we're finally getting the fruits of that labor in prequel form, showing somewhat of the origins of Tony Soprano getting into the mob business and obviously his family and all of the sort of mob drama that goes with it. I think it looks great. I mean, truth be told, I think it looks awesome. And it looks like it, it, it takes elements from, you know, great movies like The Godfather and Goodfellas and, you know, Casino and all those really great ones out there, man. And yet it's going to give it that soprano style that you know and love. Certain characters, older characters that you love now are obviously younger and you get to see where they were at the time. And it just looks great, man. And I got to give it up to the kid who plays... Tony Soprano, because it's actually James Gandolfini's son, and he looks like, I mean, he looks just like him because he is his son, he is him, and so that, that is amazing casting, that is perfect, beyond perfect casting, man, that is amazing, he looks like he's having a great time, how they even casted Ray Liotta, for Christ's sake, hey, you gotta have a little Ray Liotta in your movie, you know, <laughs> they even have that, man. I mean, I like the the old school, the old school mob look, the mob mentality. I love old school mob movies from back in the day. I think that's why I love movies like Goodfellas or the Godfather trilogy as much as I do because it feels old school. A lot of these new age gangster movies. That, that try to be, you know, like, like badass and hip and everything, I just don't think they really pull it off. I mean, not like the old school stuff does. And, and watching this trailer, it brought me back to old school mob and gangster movies. It reminded me of The Sopranos. And I got to tell you, watching it, hearing a little bit of the theme, seeing a young Tony, and seeing some of these younger characters, I'm like, oh my god, I didn't know that I needed a Sopranos film in my life until I saw a trailer for it, and now I need it in a big bad way. Is it going to be great? I don't know. I mean, it could be amazing, or it could be, like, extremely unneeded, and just kind of brings the the whole Sopranos vibe down. It, it, it might. Who knows? But for the time being... It looks really cool, and I am majorly excited for it. I don't know if you guys are, but I gotta tell you, like, I mean, yes, you kind of know what's gonna happen because it's a prequel. You you know that Tony's gonna survive. You know all these elements are gonna happen. But at the same time, 
there's still a lot of intrigue about how it all went down. And so, I sign me up, man. I'm on board. I, I really am. I don't know if you guys are. Definitely let me know. But, man, more, more Sopranos. It's about damn time. <laughs> it is indeed, man. Damn. God, I miss it. I, I do. I do, truth, truth be told. Some of the later seasons, eh, but Sopranos is still Sopranos. Sopranos is awesome. Damn glad we're getting more of it. Definitely let me know, guys. In the meantime, let's head into the second wall, and hopefully some indie goodness worth checking out. Back in at the second Walmart. Yes, indeed I am, baby. And with a smaller physical media release week, sometimes I come in here thinking, well, we're not going to see anything. I have been pleasantly surprised before, and I mean pleasantly surprised, like a shitload of media. Not a shitload of media this time around, but there is a little bit worth checking out, and you guys know that when it comes to physical media, a little definitely goes a long way. And uh, second Walmart love, how can I ever really deny it? Come on guys, seriously. So you know what that means. Oh yes, we are going back to Film Fan 108 HQ. And that means you, Seth. Yes, see you, buddy. Time to show off that physical media yet again. Hey, you ready? No, no, not really. Wait a minute, last week you were fine. Now this week suddenly you're not? What? Mm, I don't know. I'm not really feeling it, to be honest with you. I mean, I'm not really all that motivated. I mean, sometimes you feel like showing off the media and sometimes you don't. When there's no motivation, what do you really want me to do? Oh, I'll motivate you, all right. Bet your ass I'll motivate you. Now you show off that goddamn physical media, or I'm gonna come through this goddamn screen, and I'm gonna attack your ass. Jeez. Talk about motivation. Okay, fine, I'll show off the physical media. Man, to, to get all fucking Samuel Jackson up in my ass. Okay, fine, I'll do it. Uh, he does have some anger issues, though. He really does need to deal with them. I mean, maybe he should go to therapy. I'm not gonna say it to him though. You you guys can. I'm gonna I'm gonna stay back a little bit. I mean then again, when you're passionate about physical media, you are passionate about physical media, so can I really blame him? Okay, I can't. But he still needs therapy. <laughs> God damn it. Oh yes, guys. Boy, it has been kind of interesting this week so far. I mean, truth be told, this week I always knew was probably never going to be the craziest plentiful week we've ever seen. I knew we were going to see some big name titles this week, but not a huge ton of media like maybe other weeks we have. I mean, there are certain weeks where you're going to see big name titles and then not much outside of that. Other weeks you see a hell of a a lot of abundance of variety of titles out there. A little bit here, a little bit there. This week, big names, not too much else. So here I was at the second Walmart thinking to myself, okay, well, there's probably not a lot uh, to show off. And there isn't a ton, but still there is some stuff. And let's be real. When it comes to physical media in stores, there isn't always the most plentiful amount that you're really hoping there is. I mean, back in the day, man, Damn, back in the day, there was a ton of great physical media out, out there at the stores. Now, it can be a little bit of slim pickings. I'm not going to lie. It, it can at times, guys. I mean, you go and you see some of the stuff and you're like, oh, this is all they have. Great. Ah, it happens, man. It, it does. But you know, when it comes to Walmart in Indie Love, that we see a lot of really unique stuff that just is not out in any other place that you get to see. And so, any great indie physical media love is always worth showing off. Even the smallest amount is. And when it comes to the second Walmart, it's Indie Love that I love checking out. A little bit of Walmart Indie Love 
never hurt nobody. Indeed, it has not, guys. And a little bit this time around, liking what I'm seeing. Let's dive in, shall we, with the first title, and that is none other than Street Gang. How we got Sesame Street. Yeah, Sesame Street. Look at that. I love that cover, man. Damn, that's great. Oh, man, what a nostalgic style cover. Look at that. Documentary, huh? What is this about? This is a visionary gang of mission-driven artists, writers, and educators that audaciously interpreted radical changes in society and created one of the most influential and impactful television programs in history. Inspired by the activism of the late 1960s. Look at the kind of television. Oh, nice. Look at that. Beloved world of Sesame Street. Yes. Absolutely. Man, I am an old school fan of Sesame Street. I am dead serious, man. I love, love, love Sesame Street. I... Man, I used to watch Sesame Street when I was a kid, man. And I still think to this day, Sesame Street is like the best when it comes to children's programming. I really do. It taught me a lot in life and life lessons. And it it basically made me who I am. Sesame Street helped build me up to how I was as a kid. And I think it's done it for many, many kids. I mean, some people are Sesame Street lovers. Some people are Barney lovers. Some people way back in, in the day, obviously, are Mr. Rogers lovers. But it doesn't matter. Shows like Sesame Street or Mr. Rogers, Barney, you name it, they made an impression on you. They made an impression on you because of the characters, because of the lessons they were teaching you as a kid. And Sesame Street is one of the best of them. I mean, really, it is. And, oh, man, I just, I just love it. And the fact that these artists came together in this, in this socially conscious world of change and dilemmas and the idea that their voices came together to make Sesame Street that's amazing that's absolutely amazing guys it's it's it it really is it's marvelous and it's touching and it's impactful and i don't know where i would be in my life if it wasn't for Sesame Street i don't know because to me, every time I watched Sesame Street, it was like coming home to family. I mean, really, it was like coming home to family and, and friends and old friends that you just couldn't wait to see next. And even though I grew out of Sesame Street, and every kid does, you never forget watching it. You never forget those moments where you you loved hanging out with, with Big Bird and and and, and you know having a laugh because of how, you know, how sort of grouchy Oscar was, you know, or or hanging out with Bert and Ernie. I mean, you don't forget those things. Those are moments that you cherish and you love. And I, I, those moments will never be taken away from me. And I cherish them. And I think every kid does, especially the ones who grow up and really embrace the life lessons that Sesame Street has taught you. And has continued to teach kids for many, many, many decades. And hopefully many, many decades to come. If I have kids, I want them to watch Sesame Street. Because it just was... It really it really taught me so much about the world. And I'm so thankful for it. And it's documentaries like this that are really eye-opening. And shows you how much love and how much heart and sweat and tears that it took to make a show like this a reality and man it's it's documentaries like this that really make me appreciate everything that this show is that it was that it will ever be and sesame street is a magical place that every kid really deserves to spend time at beware the night Ooh, indeed, beware, baby. 
it never ends. Ah, from IFC Midnight and Scream Factory. Ah, oh, you gotta love some IFC Scream Factory love, don't you, man? And I love that cover, too. A very ominous, very creepy, foreboding. I'm liking that. Not bad. What is this about? After a night out with friends, an exhausted married couple, Babak and Nita, and their baby take shelter in, in the grand but eerie Hotel Normandy. Throughout a seemingly endless night, mysterious disturbances ruin their rest as Babak and Nita soon realize they're locked in with a malevolent force that hungers for the dark secrets they've kept from one another. <sighs> I wonder what those dark secrets are. I do indeed. With The Night, director Karash Ahari made history for being the first U.S.-produced film to receive a license for theatrical release in Iran since the revolution. Really? That's awesome, actually. That's really cool. The psychological thriller follows in the footsteps of The Shining, luring viewers into a hotel that is both ominous and inviting, where the ghosts of the past will linger around each corner. The horrors that haunt these corridors are real and terrifying. The night will make you reconsider ever spending a night away from home again. Hell, I always stay home, damn it. I never go to a motel or a hotel. They're just really creepy. And I, I'll i just remain a, a shut-in. If it's anything like, you know what? Oh yes, you know that creepy, haunting hotel that gets to everybody. And that is none other than... The Shining. Yes, indeed. Creepy, ominous. Oh, you gotta love The Shining, man. And that movie is very interesting. It definitely has a lot of vibes off of this movie. And there's a lot of films that have... I don't know whether you want to call the fact that they've ripped off the movie or that it's an homage to it, but The, the Shining did something really clever and interesting, and a lot of films have tried to ape off of The, the Shining. With mixed results, to be fair, guys. With major, major mixed results. Now, as far as the night goes, I like the concept and idea behind this. Basically... I like the idea of a loving couple that go into this hotel and they have these secrets that they're keeping from one another and the idea that these entities or this malevolent force is going against them to tear them apart. And I've always really loved that idea and that's I think why I love The Shining as much as I do. The idea of of this loving family that is being torn apart that honestly, is is being torn apart to death. I mean, you look at somebody like Jack Nicholson who would never hurt his family and then staying at that hotel for a long period of time messes with his brain chemistry and he starts to lose it. And, and what was once a very peaceful man turns into somebody who is lugging an ax around, ready to swing it at his wife's head and kill his own child. I mean, that is eerie and it's terrifying and it's scary as hell. And... I love the idea of this malevolent force that is tearing this family apart. It's 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 really just really creepy and evil and insidious and and you just fear for the family and fear for their safety and it makes the film even more thrilling and wonderful, man. It really does. I don't know, these type of movies are, are really, really solid. I mean some are better than others, to be fair. But I kind of like the idea behind this movie. Yes, it's aping off of The Shining, but if you gotta ape off of somebody, well, you might as well ape off of the best. I mean, can't say it's like The Shining, but if he goes as crazy and as mad as Jack Nicholson, well, I don't care about how much no work and no play makes Jack a doll boy. Eventually. He'll kill. Sometimes a little girl's mind can pay wicked tricks on her. Indeed it can in separation. It won't let go. Ooh, look at that. Oh my god. Creepy figures in the dark creeping on little kids. Boy, there is something incredibly messed up about that. There really is, man. Oh, what is this about? 
Eight-year-old Jenny leads a lonely but imaginative life, surrounded by puppets based on the works of her artist father. But when her mother is tragically killed in a hit-and-run and her grandfather sues for custody, the puppets and other frightening characters suddenly start coming to life. At first, Jenny is the only person who believes they're real, putting everyone's lives in danger. Ooh, little kids and evil dolls and puppets. Oh, baby, we've been down these roads a time or two, haven't we? With terrifying results. Indeed, like, for instance, I mean, I gotta say it, guys. Oh, yeah. Dolls, yes. They walk, they talk. They kill. Oh, this is a great one, man. I love this, man. I love the the great creepy dolls that, that are made, well... Not exactly made, but if you've seen the movie, you know what I'm talking about, man. I I just love how creepy and mischievous and insidious they are. I love this movie. So, so fun and entertaining and creepy. That is a really, really great one with really great killer dolls, man. Of course, I also got to talk about another one, which has some good creep factor, and that is Dolly. Dearest. Yes, look at Dolly, man. Ah, that 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 creepy evil chick. Ah, make the Barbie look like a sweetheart. <laughs> Indeed, look at that knife. She's coming for you. Oh man, look at that Dolly. I wouldn't want to spend a night alone with her. Put it that way, man. And there's been a bunch of other ones. I mean, obviously, there's been Child's Play, and there's been Puppet Master. There's been a lot of stuff like that, guys, obviously. So this is very much in the vein of those type of movies, man. And I love that. I just love the idea of a little girl's toys come to life and how she's really the only one that knows or believes that, that they're real and everyone pays the consequences because of it. You know, it, it's interesting because I grew up as an only child and I didn't have another sibling to sort of bounce off of. So I had to use my imagination. And my imagination was one of those wild things that just you'd go out and and think of the most craziest weirdest creative stuff you you can and sometimes people would look at you like oh this is really odd and weird but when you're when you're an only child you come up with things and ideas that you know sometimes oh you know a kid's imagination but what if a kid's imagination wasn't an imagination at all but the truth but the parents, because it's a little kid, decide not to believe her. We've dealt with that. I mean, the Child's Play franchise has dealt with that. Dolly Dearest has, and many others. You know, we we raise kids, right? We raise kids to not lie, to tell the truth. And then when they decide to tell the truth, we end up sometimes not believing them. And it's a very interesting dichotomy, isn't it? It's a very interesting way about it. And I just love the idea that that it's sort of like almost like the idea of the boy that cried real wolf, right? You say it so many times, and then when it really happens, nobody actually believes it. And it just is the terrifying and insidious <laughs> dilemmas and the killings that happen because of it. I think this is actually really cool, man. It could be really cool. I love the killer dolls, you know, killer puppets. I mean, I love that stuff, man, because your imagination just runs wild with the possibilities. And a lot of times, the results are really killer, man. And separation could be one one of them. I mean, there's been some really great ones. And then there's been other ones like Annabelle, which have been eh, just okay. But separation looks really interesting. And if there's anything like that creepy fucker... Consider me fully terrified. Shh. Beware of those dark whispers. Who indeed, baby. Look at that. Beware of, of creepy, weird, evil fuckers with red eyes and horribly long fingernails. Oh, God. Good Lord. Some voices can't be ignored. Yeah, especially weird, creepy people with... 
huge nails. Man, get a get a manicure, damn it. <laughs> Jeez. Whoa, look at that. Yo. I mean, yes, get get the manicure, but I mean, jeez, go to the fucking dentist. God. What do you remember the cone heads? Jesus Christ. What the hell is this? Clara is a young woman who inherits a strange book from her recently deceased mother called the Book of Dark Secrets. As soon as she begins reading the tales, she realizes the book holds a terrible supernatural secret and that she must finish the book immediately or face peril. This anthology horror film composed a collection of spine-tingling shorts from Australian women directors that are linked by one continuous narrative. Really? Horror anthology. You definitely would not get that from the cover that it's a horror anthology, but that is awesome. You guys know how much I love my horror anthology. You guys must know by now. I really do. I mean, whether it's stuff like Creep Show 2, which is absolutely amazing. I mean, or other really great tales out there. I mean, Two Evil Eyes is absolutely amazing. I mean, Creep Show is fantastic. Body Bags is amazing. From a Whisper to a Scream. Many, many more. I mean, even stuff like Dead Time Stories is really cool. I really love that, that one a lot. Old school stuff like the monster club which i really really love that's a really great one newer entries like the mortuary collection which is absolutely fantastic i i love that one so much that one is really really cool or even one not too long back that was really cool something like scare package which is really phenomenal as well i mean there is some really really good horror anthology out there there really honestly is guys and maybe Add a new one to the mix? Possibly? I mean, I like that cr creepy weird fucker. I, I like that a lot. Look at that. That is definitely haunting. And the fact that they're all connected by female directors. That is really cool, man. I mean, there's something about a female director that has... You know, a certain different level of of horror than what a male director would have. I mean, the idea that a movie like Pet Cemetery was directed by a female. That's crazy. That that that's that's majorly crazy. But the fact that it works because of of life and death and you know, females have more of an intimate relationship with that more than men do and I think even sort of looking at a director like Catherine Bigelow, who did something like Near Dark, and her sort of take on on giving life and giving death and immortality, female directors have been doing some really interesting work for a really long time, and it's nice to see some some indie female directors doing some horror anthology love. That could be really cool, man. I mean, mind you, as long as it's not like creep show three level bad then it's all good if it's that well i don't care how long that person's fingernails are you ain't saving this movie <laughs> let's hope it's much better than that guy but it looks cool man i definitely would be interested in giving this one a chance that would not be bad creepy weird fuckers horror anthology style gotta love it you gotta love it indeed and by the way you gotta love the second walmart i mean come on where else can you find these gems other than your average everyday old walmart nowhere the sesame street gang is real y'all big bird and i were tight yo west side Maybe I should probably tell my girlfriend to never take me to mysterious and dark hotels. Because all work and no play makes Seth a dull boy. <laughs> oh, I am so glad that I no longer play with creepy dolls. And if I am ever in the same dark room with this weird dude, I'm going to put my head between my legs and... Kiss my ass goodbye. <laughs> I definitely, definitely am, guys. And boy, what weird indie goodness this time around. You gotta love it, baby. You gotta love it. A little bit goes a long way. And when it comes to indie weirdness at Walmart, 
Oh, it definitely goes quite far. It does indeed, man. Some really, really great physical media indie. Love this time around, guys. And I got to admit, man, I mean, yes, do I long for the old school days of physical media in-store love. Yes, I remember Circuit City. I remember going to Blockbuster. I remember the old school days of Hollywood video and going in and checking out miles and miles of phys physical media, going into media play, you name it. And those days are just gone. Yeah, they're zippity doo dah goodbye. They're never co coming back. And that's the reality of the situation. And there is going to be weeks where physical media is just not as crazy plentiful as we would like it to be. Lord knows I would love everything that is on Blu-ray.com to be in stores because that would be really cool. It's just not a reality and it's just not ever going to happen. But I still love the fact that physical media is around. You know, through all of the struggles and through all of the issues that have happened over the years with physical media, the fact that digital has really taken such a gigantic foothold and people are getting rid of their physical media, you know... There was a part of me that five years ago thought maybe physical media is completely dead. It's completely dead and it's not going to stick around anymore and we're just not going to see it in stores. And I'm so glad to be wrong on that. I mean, yes, it's not like the glory days anymore and maybe there's not as much media to show off, but there is still stuff worth showing off. Stuff like from the second Walmart that is worth at least checking out. You might not always love it. You might not think it's always the great, greatest stuff in the world. But it's stuff that's always worth at least showing off and giving a chance to. And that's stuff that I really appreciate. You know, there's so many things in this world that has went the way of the dinosaur. Things that are no longer around. And the fact that physical media is still alive and kicking, that's really cool to me. That's really important. And any chance that I get to show off physical media love, even if it's the smallest amount, is still incredibly worth it, guys. And I hope you guys agree out, out there. Might not always believe you the most plentiful but i'll take what i can get i hope you guys do too a little bit goes a long way for sure man and speaking of physical media love well there is one more location to go to so hopefully more unique media worth checking out we've been to walmart we've been to target second walmart i feel like we're missing someplace i feel like we are Walmart, Target, second Walmart. Hmm. What am I forgetting? Ah, yes. Beast Love. <laughs> yes, I for totally forgot. Beast Love, guys. And speaking of Beast Love, we are at our next location, aren't we? Indeed, we are. And that is none other than Best Buy, the Beast. Best Buy, baby. You know, it's been okay physical media week. Not exactly the greatest, not exactly the worst. Some solid releases though. So what does that mean for Best Buy? Well, it could mean many things. It could be not a lot of releases to see. Could be some cool exclusives, Steelbook Love, and everything in between. Maybe, kinda, sorta, Best Buy, you never quite know these days, but I'm always willing to go for a little beast love, aren't you? Let's hope. Let's go for some good beast love this week. Let's head in to Best Buy to find out. All right, everybody, we are in at Best Buy under the new releases and a little bit of new release love that I'm seeing among some of the empty areas. And the first is none other than Mortal Kombat, the Blu-ray digital for $19.99, the 4K Blu-ray digital for $27.99. However, no steelbook love this time around guys unfortunately not uh, i think somebody did a major fatality on the steelbook so uh better luck next time I, I suppose but you know this is a very popular movie so i could see why these sold out i'm sure they'll get more in guys they've done it before and they will do it again however at least we got a little bit of love we're talking about right and that is definitely not a bad thing man now Ah, video game adaptations. Oh, man, oh, man. You know I had to talk about it, guys. I mean, seriously, you had to have known. 
<sighs> you could go down the rabbit hole of video game adaptations. You really honestly can, man. And I got to tell you, it's a minefield. It really is. I mean, some are not bad. I mean, you look at Super Mario Brothers. Okay, that's not exactly the best movie of all time. It's certainly not the best video game adaptation ever. Does it really even take a lot of the game and actually make it into movie form? Not really. I mean, it's just it, they manipulate it in such a weird and strange way than what the video game ever is. However, I actually kind of do have a soft spot for that movie. I really do. I mean, you look at a movie like Double Dragon, which is one of the not-so-great ones. Talk about a, a movie that would actually deserve a reboot. I would actually love to see a reboot of Double Dragon. That would be cool, man. I'd definitely be interested in that. That one, uh, not, not so much, man. Uh, yeah, not, not, not a good one. Then again, there's other ones like Street Fighter. Which I happen to really like Street Fighter. I think Street Fighter's really good, man. I mean, yes, is it cheesy as shit? Oh, yeah, it's cheesy as shit and ridiculous and over the top. And it crams, like, every single fucking character in. I mean, even if they don't have much to do, they just fucking cram them in for the sake of cramming them. I mean, I love it. I mean, Jean-Claude Van Damme is absolutely ridiculous in the movie. He is... <laughs> I mean, that fucking haircut, man. Oh, God. I mean, he's good in it, but I think the star of that movie is Raul Julia playing Bison. I mean, he's so good as Bison. He he elevates that movie way more than it deserves to be, but I actually like the cheesiness of it. I really do, man. And there's other ones that are not bad. I mean, look, I like the first Resident Evil movie. Can't say I like the other ones, but the first Resident Evil movie is really good. I happen to like House of the Dead. I know, you guys are probably ready to, like, choke me through the screen, but <laughs> seriously, I actually kind of do. Is it a terrible movie? Yes. I'll agree, it's a terrible m movie, but you want to know what? It's actually, it's it's so bad it's good, put it that way, and that's what I really appreciate ab about it, man. I mean, you have that, you, you have other movies that are not very successful in their adaptations, like Max Payne which wasn't really all that successful or, or great. And there's other ones that have went down the rabbit hole. You know, where does this movie fit in? I honestly actually think, I mean, first off, it's not as good as the 95 version. Let, let, let's be real. The 95 version, if you're talking about video game-based movies, video game adaptations, turn to movies, the 95 one has to be one of the top tier ones. I mean, it really honestly does. If you're thinking about it, it has to be top tier. Where does this rank? I think this ranks, to me, higher middle, I would say. It would rank somewhere in the higher middles for, for me. I think it has a lot of great ideas, but I don't think it actually executes them incredibly successful as I was hoping it would. I mean... When you think of a Mortal Kombat movie, there's a lot of things you think about. And it's the fatalities, which they do some, but not as good as they could. You think of the tournament, which they do none of that in, in this movie. And I feel like a lot of characters weren't really utilized as well as they could be. Again, it's not a bad movie, and as far as video game adaptations are concerned, I mean, I mean, look, it, it beats Max Payne. It it beats a lot of other ones out there that are not that great. I mean, I actually prefer Super Mario Brothers over this. I prefer Street Fighter over this. I I know, and you guys are thinking to yourself like, oh my god, really? And yeah, I I do. There was a certain amount of fun that I was missing from this movie, and I think successful video game adaptations whether we're talking about a successful one like Sonic or a lot of other ones is it takes the idea it turns it into movie form but it makes it it makes effort to to bring over the fun and entertaining quality that you know and love 
I think the 95 movie does that in spades, but I think this version is missing some of that along the, the way. I mean, they got the serious, dark, dreary aspect of the setting of Mortal Kombat and these characters, but I felt like there was something lost in translation with this movie overall. I, I really do, man. I mean, it's it's an effort. They tried, and I give them credit, but I don't think they 100% successfully pulled it off, man. I mean, I mean, look, video game-based movies are haven't exactly been the most successful. In fact, one of the best video game based movies isn't even really based on a video game and it's Scott Pilgrim. I mean, come on, man. <laughs> so, you can make a good video game based movie. It's not as easy as people think it might be to translate over the gaming experience over to a movie experience is not easy. I think Mortal Kombat tried to try to be the best of both worlds and I think you got to be one or the other you, you've got to really embrace the video game ideas behind it or you've just got to say look we're going to go the movie route and do that I think this was trying to be an in-between movie and I just don't think it, it worked man I mean I think this is a setup for a really great Mortal Kombat movie in the future but as far as like a great adaptation of what the video games are I don't really see that in this movie. Whereas with other ones out there, like a Street Fighter or some of these other ones, even a Resident Evil, I actually see the video game and I see the movie and I think they coexist pretty well. I, I can see the vibe they were trying to go for and I think it works. This one, it just didn't quite do it for me, guys. And I think a lot of people were hoping it was gonna do the same thing and I think they were let down by it. Maybe it was the expectations. I mean, who knows? But I just don't think it did, man. You do get a lot of special features, though. I mean, you get deleted scenes. You get a bunch of featurettes. The making of Mortal Kombat. Anatomy of a scene. I mean, you get a lot of stuff here. I mean, I mean, great for any fan of the movie. But I gotta be honest, man. I mean, I'm an old school fan of the video games. And I haven't played a Mortal Kombat game in a really long time. I don't know if this movie takes inspiration more from the newer games than it does the older ones. I'm not sure, man. I just know that when I watch a video game-based movie, I'm looking for entertainment. I'm looking for fun. I'm looking for... I'm lo lo looking for the game in movie form in a lot of ways. Even a, even a video game based movie like Doom, I thought did really good. Uh, I did, I can't say it's a perfect movie, but it translates the experience onto the screen and that's something I appreciate. I just don't think Mortal Kombat really did that as well as it could have. Definitely let me know though guys, but this movie made a shitload load of money. You know we're getting a sequel. Just give me the damn tournament. That's all I'm asking for. If you give me a cool tournament and some really bloody, brutal, gory fatalities, I'm a happy camper. And then we got a little Statham love, baby. Yes. Ah, with Wrath of Man, the Blu-ray digital for $22.99. <sighs> that badass English bastard. <laughs> I do appreciate Statham. I really do, as I said, guys. Uh, you know, I do kind of like the fact that, that Statham has, in a lot of ways, replaced people like Van Damme and Seagal and brought, you know, more mainstream sort of martial arts action to the forefront after those guys had basically you know all but shitted the bed I mean let's be real man and here's the thing about Statham I think when Statham shines he really shines but it depends on the role I would say man I mean I look at movies like the Transporter series I mean yes the Transporter the first one is the best of them all but the sequels aren't outright terrible either, but he does shine in them. You look at the Crank movies. Crank movies are awesome, and he does an amazing job in them. He he is great. It's a it's a showcase for him just to go just 
bonkers and just crazy wild and it's um, it's amazing it really is man i mean you look at that or war with jet lee which is a great movie uh, the bank job the italian job which is which is great as well i i love those ones those ones are really great and then there's other franchises and other movies where I don't know if he's shined the way that maybe he was meant to. I mean, you look at something like the Expendables series, and it's cool to see him with all those, like, badass, I- iconic action stars. It's cool to see him in there, but I don't think that he was utilized as well as he could have been. I mean, maybe the first one, but the other ones, I think Jason Statham was severely lacking. Even in the Fast and the Furious movies, I mean, I think the spin-off, Hobbs and Shaw, is amazing. And I think he definitely shines in that movie in a big, bad way. But outside of Part 7, which I thought he got to do some cool things in, I don't know if they've utilized Statham as well as they could. I think sometimes he gets shortchanged. I mean, you have a ton of characters, and he gets lost in in the shuffle. That happens. I mean, even some of the other ones out there that are not as good. I mean, you look at something like Homefront. Homefront is just okay. Or you look at The Mechanic. Eh, The Mechanic is what it is. It's not exactly like, you know, high action art. I would say it's not the greatest in the world. I mean, it's... I think it depends on the roles that he does. And I think certain roles he's able to shine in more than others i mean i look at something like spy or the pink panther and i'm like uh jason statham isn't exactly known for his comedy chops i mean it's he's okay in them i think it just depends on the role that he's able to do whether it works out or not i mean if you really just have a statham movie where he just like goes off in just major action and he just showcases how badass of an action star and how much of an intimidating figure he could be, he really goes for it. But you got to give him a certain amount of leeway. You got to you got to let him do his thing. You can't you can't handcuff him. And certain roles even though he gets a huge paycheck out of them, I don't know whether he really ends up shining in those roles or not. I'm kind of curious as to what you guys think about that. I mean, with this role, he shines. He absolutely shines in, in this role. Maybe not the most badass Statham you've ever seen in your life. Maybe not the most action-heavy Statham you've ever seen in your life. But I think as far as his acting, I think as far as a presence is concerned, Jason Statham brings it in this role in a big, bad way, man. I mean, he, he really does. Don't see any special features here, which is a damn shame, because I'd love to, to hear something about this movie. Feature as commentary, something. That's a damn shame, I mean, especially considering it's a Guy Ritchie movie. And that's kind of weird, because when I look at this movie, even though it's a Statham film, it doesn't feel like a Jason Statham movie. Like, it's not like your typical Statham action type of movie. When I look at this movie, I don't look at it as a Guy Ritchie movie because it doesn't feel like a Guy Ritchie movie. It's a weird sort of kind of balance. It really is a weird one because when you think of Statham, you think of high-octane action. And yes, this movie has it, but not really the way you'd normally say a Statham movie has. This movie doesn't really have the sort of notable sort of signature style that a Guy Ritchie movie would have but yet he directs it really excellently and the direction is top notch it's an odd one in both of their camps and yet it's a really great movie so I don't know man It's it's kind of an oddity in a lot of ways but still a really good one but just know going in that it's a little complicated. There's times when you're moving, you know, back in time to tell a certain part of the story, forward in, t- in time to come back to the current events, and it just goes back and forth like that. And in some ways, I know that can confuse audiences. Hell, that's confused my mother a lot of times when it comes to certain movies. I think they could have probably done it a little bit better, but at the end of the day, the movie still works. 
and Jason Statham has presence for days, and you gotta give Guy Ritchie credit, because a man who usually does a lot of, you know, very interesting, quirky, British action-style movies has done some really interesting stuff as of late. Things like Aladdin, which, crazy enough, actually worked for what it is. And even this movie, that even though it's not his signature style, it's still an awesome movie, and he pulls it off. It, it really is, man. He's, it's good. It really is good. If you're looking for a movie that has a really badass, interesting anti-hero that makes everyone around him look like an absolute wimp. Man, Statham's a guy for you. Well, it's good to see they actually got more Scott Pilgrim love in because last week that sold out fast, man. So good to see they actually got a few more in for all those hardcore Scott Pilgrim lovers. Really cool that they got that. And also having the Space Jam 4K Steelbook Best Buy exclusive love, baby. It's nice to see one of those ones from last week I didn't get a chance to check out, man. $33.99 for the Steelbook. Woo, man, that is a hefty price for the steel. I mean, it does look like a cool steel, though. I like sort of the basketball court, and I, I like sort of the, the imagery of of B Bugs and Jordan together. I, I, I do like it. It actually looks kind of, kind of cool now that I'm seeing it in person. It's not bad, man. I don't know if it's like $34 amazing, but it is good. Man, let me tell you. There's something about nostalgia that is really powerful. And when it comes to Space Jam, you know, you just had to be there at the time, man. You just had to be. It was just this great confluence of of basketball and and sort of cartoon mixed together, man. And yeah, it was all corporate and yeah, it was all to, to sell more more toys and merchandise and all shit like that. But then again, what movie isn't nowadays? I mean, let, let's be real, man. I mean, it was great for the time that it was made in. And I look forward to what the sequel has in store for us. You know, I like LeBron. I'm interested to seeing the the Looney Tunes again, but at the same time, there's something about this movie that was right place, right time, and the right age. And can they really strike lightning twice? Can they can they really do it? I don't know, but as we're about to find out, but man. Space Jam was one of those movies where there's certain films that are like they're right for the time that they're they're made in, and I just don't know if you you can really do it twice. But if not, hey, we'll always have Space Jam. I mean, come on, man, we definitely will. That's an interesting steal for sure. They have that, and then they also have one more copy left of this Saw Steelbook that is still here, man, for eighteen ninety nine. That's a hell of a steal. I mean. I mean, that's going for like 34 bucks. This is like 19 which is the better offer. This is way, way better of an offer, man. This thing keeps on like showing up and, and staring me in the face, man. It really does. Ah, dude, man. Oh, I'll have much more to say next week. That is by far on, on the Soft franchise. Trust me, guys. But I got to tell you, man, Saw Love, it's, it's one of those series that... It was so popular that I think people didn't like the fact that it was popular. And now that it sort of went away for a while, I think people have reevaluated the movies and have come to appreciate them a little bit more. I hope more appreciation comes to, to them because they're way better than people give them credit for, man. But I am shocked to still see Steelbook love for that. I'm incredibly shocked, man. Boy, still here. Shocker of a, lo a lifetime. Man, people are missing out on that one, let me tell you. Not bad so far. Not bad at all. A little bit of Steelbook Love. New Steelbook Love. Haven't seen. And a couple of new releases. Not bad. See what else they got. And on the other side of the new releases, well, at least they have a little bit more Godzilla vs. Kong love than they did last week. Oh my god. Like, this thing was completely empty. They have a little bit more, guys. Man, not much more, though. Jeez, this thing is still selling like gangbusters. Holy shit, man. Well, it is really popular, and it's Godzilla vs. Kong. Kind of makes sense, man. So they definitely got some restocking to do on that. But they did actually get in a little bit more 
Scream Factory Kong Collector's Edition love, man. Cheesy, but all kinds of entertaining. Man, I do really love that, 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 that movie, man. As a King Kong lover, it, it, it is good. Not the best Kong, but I still love it all the same, man. Really do. They have Mortal Engines, some steelbooks of that. They got in some more copies of Howard the Duck because, you know, you can't have a Best Buy in your area without more Howard the Duck love because we need more people to find Howard the Duck in their lives. We need more people to discover the rock and roll loving, sex crazed Howard the Duck. Oh... I just still love it, man. There, like I said last week, there was that cashier that was talking about Howard, Howard the Duck with him. I'm like, yeah, and he and he gets laid with a human chick. And she's like, wait a minute, what did you say? <laughs> yeah, Howard the Duck. More people need to, to discover this this intergalactic suave motherfucker. <laughs> they really do, man. I'm telling you. More 4K Howard the Duck love is never a bad thing. Put it that way, never bad. They have that... They also have the Blu-ray digital of Spongebob, ah, the movie, Sponge on the Run, oh man, Sponge on the Run, Sponge on the Run, (laughs) oh man, oh, it doesn't matter whether it's little kids who love the talking sponge or people smoking a shitload of weed and then watching Spongebob. Everybody just happens to, to love that, that undersea quirky son of a bitch. <laughs> they definitely do, man. For $17.99, not bad on that one, dude. And then the other thing I'm seeing is they do have the 4K Ultra HD Blu-ray Digital of Snatch for $22.99 and the only at Best Buy Project Pop Art exclusive for $25.99. Not a bad steel book. I kind of like he's like getting the shit kicked out of him in the ring. Great. It's a good, decent steal from them. It's okay. I mean, it doesn't really stand out to me. Like, I would probably pick the standard art more than I would actually the steel book art, but that's just me, though. I mean, regardless of whether you pick this or that, the movie is awesome guys i mean this is a really great movie when you think of guy ritchie there's certain movies that you think of and snatch is absolutely one of them man it is awesome i mean look at that cast man i mean benicio del toro vinnie jones jason statham brad pitt i mean that is a cast man and it is awesome is all kinds of awesome i love this movie it is it's so weird and odd Quirky, definitely has that British sense of of humor that sometimes, sometimes I get, and sometimes I'm like, huh? <laughs> but it's so good, and I I love the these these oddball, ridiculous characters. And I remember when this movie came out, and everybody was like really loving Brad Pitt in this movie because like nobody ever thought Brad Pitt would make a movie like this, like a high profile A list actor making this quirky type of of role that he was in in this movie. But then again, you look back at Brad Pitt's career, he's done some really weird stuff, and it, it kind of fit his M.O., but he's just having fun in this movie. Hell, everybody's having fun, man. I love the action here. I love the, the heist gone terribly wrong, and sort of all the, the weird and odd and, and, and quirky things that happen because of it, all of the, of the hilarity. It's a really fun movie, man. It's just a fun action heist film that I dig. I really dig this movie, man. It's great. I mean, I I love Guy Ritchie, and it's movies like Snatch that make me really love him, man. And this is this is one of his best ones. I mean, it really is. Snatch is awesome. Oh, that's so cool. And look at all the special features as well. Scenes, director and producer commentary, making of. Nice. Not bad, man. This is awesome. I mean, if you've never went down the road of Guy Ritchie please do it man I mean Rock and Rolla this movie Lock, Sock and Two Smoking Barrels the the two Sherlock Holmes movies with Downey like those are amazing man I mean yes he hasn't done everything perfect but man when he does a great sort of British 
you know, comedy movie, he does a really good job with it. And Snatch is amazing. I, I love this. And it's so cool that it got the, the 4K love. And hopefully more people will find that movie because, man, it totally, totally deserves it. It really does, man. It is absolutely awesome. Man, it truly is, dude. And not bad this week. I mean, they still got a lot of holes. But they still have some love me nobody. The Fast and Furious Steel book, Backdraft Steel, which is nice. They still got some decent stuff, all things considered. Let's see what else they got. And on the back side of the physical media area, kind of full, kind of empty-ish. I mean, there's not really any major new releases over in this section that I'm seeing. And I'm actually kind of shocked because that Dr. Strangelove from last week, that is completely sold out, man. That went incredibly fast. Holy cow, man. Damn, that flew. That's all out. I mean, they do have, actually, some Explorers Love, which, which is really cool to, to see. That's really nice, man. What an awesome movie, man. I'm so glad Shell put that out, dude. I mean, they have that, which is awesome, but not much other really love that I'm seeing, actually. Kind of crazy. I thought I'd see just a little bit of indie stuff, but no, unfortunately not, man. I mean, I am seeing they do have that steelbook of Lovecraft Country, the complete first season, and actually I'm surprised no one has actually snatched this thing up because we're never getting any more Lovecraft Country, which is weird because H HBO canceled the damn thing, and so weird because now the Emmy nominations are out, and like this thing got so much Emmy nomination love, I mean crazy. It, it got so much major love from the, the Emmys, and it just got canceled. <laughs> like, holy shit, man. Like, you never really know what's going to hit until it actually does, man. And it kind of sucks because I kind of like the show. And I really wanted to see more. I wanted to see where, where they went with it. And, yeah, this like, never going to happen now. It's so, it's, it's so crazy. I mean, for, for 35 bucks, it is a little bit of a hike, but it is a good, man. And, well... If you're looking for Lovecraft Love, well, it is pretty good, considering that we're only just going to get the one s season of it. That sucks, but I do have that. But then over in this area, guys, yeah, it's a little empty, but there is actually some cool stuff we're seeing because they have actually that cool Phantasm Sphere set. Look at this. Oh, man, that's cool. I've actually shown this off before, man. When, when I think like Best Buy or so somebody else had this in the past, dude. But they have this again. Oh man, that is sweet. I love the sphere, dude. Look at that. Oh, nice. Oh, that's so awesome, dude. This is great. Oh, this is really cool, man. I love this. I mean, I'm a huge Phantasm fan. I love Phantasm. I already own one of the box sets of Phantasm, so I don't technically need this. But man, whoever does, I mean, it's. Uh, it's only like ninety-four dollars. Whoa! <laughs> but it is cool, though. All things considered, man, that is really awesome. That is cool. I mean, they have that. They also end up having the Thor three movie collection, Blu-ray digital for forty-two ninety-nine. Wow! I mean, it is a three m movie collection set, though. Man. Wow, I, I think this is one of those collection sets that came out this week. I'm almost positive it was, man. And I really do like all three of the Thor movies. I know what you guys are thinking. Wait a minute, you even like the Dark World? <laughs> like, yeah, I actually really do like the Dark World, man. I don't think it's as bad as everybody says it is. I mean, it's not top-tier Marvel, okay? But it's not the worst I've ever seen of Marvel. I don't think it, it is, man. But I think it's a really solid movie. I still have a good time with it. I mean, is it the least of the Thor movies? Yes, it is. Like, I still think the first Thor movie is really great. For a Phase 1 movie, introducing the idea of, you know, other realms, I think they pulled it off really well. I mean, trying to do a convincing you know, live-action Thor movie is not exactly the most easiest thing in the world to do, but they actually pulled it off, and it was it was awesome, and Chris Hemsworth was great here, Kenneth Branagh directing the first movie is awesome, I really love it, and even Thor Ragnarok, I mean, when I first saw Thor Ragnarok, I absolutely hated the movie, I'm serious, I did not really like it, I didn't get why people thought it was so good, 
And then the more I've watched it, the more I got it. And I think the reason why I didn't like it at first was because of the comedy. I think I was not prepared for the weird comedy that came from this movie. I'm like, wait a minute. Yes, Thor has been kind of funny in moments, but not like this. And it was a really weird tonal shift that I wasn't prepared for. But the more I've watched it, the more I've actually embraced it and liked it a lot more. I, mean, I actually think all three movies are, are good. I mean, yes, Dark World is not great. Yes, it's probably bottom tier, obviously, like, you know, cinematic universe MCU stuff. But it's not terrible. Oh, come on, man. I don't know. I, I, happen to th- I happen to dig it with the Dark Elves and shit. I don't know. I, I mean, Thor is cool. And I give Chris Hemsworth a lot of credit, man, because he's really made Thor his own. He's really made Thor a very relatable and interesting character. And he's able to keep the character going after all this time. I mean, a character that is very Shakespearean and mythology-esque you almost think would kind of run out of steam but he's made it work for so long and i can't wait to see where love and thunder goes i i can't wait i mean taika watiti coming back natalie portman coming back i'm actually really excited man i mean when all the other mcu ones have kind of you know died off and sort of left thor has still stuck around But I think Chris Hemsworth has found a new vitalization for the character that has really made him want to continue playing it. And I can't wait to see where Thor goes next. I also have that three-movie Iron Man collection for $42.99 as well. And this one got released this this week, too, if I'm not mistaken. Ah, Iron Man. (laughs) Yes, Tony Stark. Or some people like to call him Tony Stank. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> oh man, I love the Iron Man franchise. I love the Tony Stark character and what just an amazing characterization that Robert Downey Jr. made from the first movie all the way through to the end of Avengers Endgame. And I gotta be honest with you guys, my girlfriend and I just recently like within the past day or two watched Avengers Endgame because we're we're going through the Marvel ones that she hasn't watched and we got to Endgame and at the end she cried she cried tears were welling up she cried man fuck I I cried (laughs) god damn it I've watched this movie like Endgame so many times and I'm like fuck I'm still crying it still affects me man but that's but that's Downey that's Downey, man. He's good. He's effective. He, he made this character out to be this narcissistic jerk. And and he really made a whole great character arc out of it. It's amazing. And he deserves all the credit that he gets. He, he really does, man. I mean, that character has really went through one hell of a journey. And these Iron Man movies are a testament to it. Just how great of an actor he is. Just the special effects, the story the directing just great great movies overall i mean yes it's not the most greatest of like the trilogies of mcu i think like captain america trilogy is probably better than the iron man stuff to 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 be real with you but i still love all of the movies man i mean the first iron man out of the three is probably the most classic is probably the the best one out of all three of them it really is the one where it really gets you into the MCU. It gets you into this character. And in a lot of ways, I kind of feel like it's, even though it was in phase one, it's still top tier MCU. Iron Man 2, a lot of people shit on Iron Man 2. A lot of people are always like, well, it's sort of like Avengers light. Like they're setting up all of these storylines with all these characters and they're bringing in all these people. And I'm like, yeah and your point like I, i'm just like what's the problem with that i mean i i love black widow in this movie i i thought nick fury was really good i like them bringing in the idea of other ca- characters like seeing the prototype of cap shield or other things like other characters going on various adventures like iron man 2 I actually think Iron Man 2 is vastly underrated. I like the character of Whiplash. I like the story of of the idea that once you become Iron Man, what, what does that really mean? And 
the idea of holding on to that mantle and the responsibility of it and the weight that it carries on you, the fact that you have to protect these people, but yet you can't even protect yourself. Like, I, I like that idea. I think it's really cool, man. And I just love the action in here and the quirkiness of Mickey Rourke and his and his parrot. Like, well, what the fuck? <laughs> it, it, it's weird, man, but I kind of like it, dude. I, I really do. Now, the third movie... See, I actually think the third movie is probably the weakest of all of the Iron Man films, but I do actually really lo love it. I kind of wish Jon Favreau would have come back, but I like the idea of it during Christmas. I like Shane Black's directing, and I know so many people are pissed on, on this movie, and they're so pissed because of the Mandarin thing, right? You know, and I, I remember when this movie came out and the controversy behind that, and, and fans went apeshit. You're like this is what you do to the mandarin like they were they were they were ready to like fucking riot man and, and i'm like i'm like hold on a second man i mean i i like when the mcu does stuff that you're not expecting and i like the idea of taking this character and doing something different and sort of pulling the rug out from under people Sometimes comic book movies can be a little bit predictable, and I like that idea behind it. I actually really enjoy it. The idea of him and going on this adventure with this boy, I like that stuff quite a bit. I like the idea of these the soldiers sort of blowing themselves up and him using the various Iron Man suits and how he's sort of paranoid because of his his adventures in in, in like the Avengers m movie and going to outer space. Like, that stuff, like, I, I love that, and I think it's awesome. It's really great, man. I mean, the Iron Man series is not perfect, but then again, the character isn't perfect, but I like the evolution that Robert Downey gave Tony Stark, man. And and I just like the, this guy that, that, that maybe always had hum, humanity, but never was able to truly find it. I really appreciate that, man. I, I really do, and... The performance is amazing, and the character is fantastic, and there really will be nobody else in the MCU like Tony Stark, and God bless Robert Downey Jr. for sticking around as long as he did, because he could have booked at any point, man. I mean, he made a lot of money. He could have said, I'm out, I'm gone, but he stuck around, man. I mean, yes, it was the money, to be fair, but I think he got attached to this character, and he wanted to see it through, and he did. And it's an amazing journey, and I really appreciate it, man. Gotta love the Iron Man franchise. Finally, they end up having this Indiana Jones 4 m movie 4K collection. Man, I mean, it's not the Steelbooks, to be fair, but, I mean, geez, I haven't seen it here, here at Best Buy, like, since the damn thing came out, man, so consider me a very happy to finally see it here. Dude, this is awesome, and you gotta love the art on this. The art on this is amazing. It's fantastic. Oh, that's so great. Oh, and it comes with a map, too. Look, look, look at that. Oh, that's cool. Dude. Oh, man, I, I love Indiana Jones. I, I love this character so much. I mean, the first three movies are amazing. They really are, man. I mean, obviously, the, the uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark is fantastic, man. I, I love that movie. I love when when the nazis open up like the chest and everything and their faces are starting to fucking melt i'm like yes yes as as, as a jew that like gave me complete satisfaction <laughs> i was like melt melt where's the fucking marshmallows <laughs> i was like yes oh lord man and then i gotta say with temple of doom a lot of people don't love temple of doom Man, I actually really love Temple of Doom. I think Temple of Doom is really fun, and it's a really dark Indiana Jones movie. Like, Kalima, Kalima. <laughs> I, I love that word. Like, like the shaman is, is taking the heart out of the guy. I remember when I watched that as a kid, and I was like, I was like, what the hell just happened? You can do that? You can take somebody's heart? I was like, what the fuck? I, like, my brain was, like, melting. I was like, oh, my God. I'm, I'm, I'm like, Jesus Christ. I, it, was, it was wild to me, man. But I love sort of the adventure aspect to that m movie. I love Short Round. Short Round is awesome. 
I, that's great. That movie is way better than people give it credit for, man. It really is. And The Last Crusade, The Last Crusade is amazing. I mean, Harrison Ford and Sean Connery together is one hell of a comedy duo, man. I love that. We're like, everything that Indiana do is doing is wrong, and he's always correcting him. And, like, his father is, is, is a better explorer and a better man than he'll ever be in so m- many ways. I, I just love it, man. I think it's so great. And Connery is having so much fun here. And I love, I love the idea of the chalice and drinking from the chalice. And if you drink the, the wrong one, like, like, you instantly are, are like, <laughs> you, like you, you turn into, like, a, a withered up corpse and shit. Like, I'm like, my God, man. I love that, and I love the booby traps and, and all of the adventure aspect of that. That's so fun, man. Man, that movie's awesome. God, it's a, and to me, it's a great end to the Indiana Jones series, right? Because why would anybody ever want Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade? <sighs> that movie coined the term, nuke the fridge, and we're not better off for it. God damn it, man. You know... There are certain franchises that just have to end. And honestly, the Indiana Jones franchise needed to end after The Last Crusade. It really did, man. I mean, look, I don't... I mean, there are moments in The Last Crusade that are really great that says, okay, this is the end of the road. And then you have to make Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. And why, 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 why did you have to do it? Why? I mean, it's kind of cool to see Nancy Allen coming back to the franchise. It's cool to see her and Indiana Jones interacting with one another. That's really cool. But why Shia LaBeouf? Why? Him swinging on vines with CGI monkeys? I could give a fuck. I, I don't really care about him in the movie whatsoever. It's supposed to be like a passing of the torch, but really seriously, Harrison Ford and Shia LaBeouf. Is, is there really a contest? I, I, I mean, come on, man. I mean, you have that. Kate Blanchett, I really love, but I didn't really like her as the villain here. I mean, it just kind of felt like the series was tired, and it was trying to reinvent itself, but it just didn't work. And now we're getting a fifth movie, and Harrison Ford is like... like 150 years old and and it's like you just don't buy him doing this stuff anymore and i know they want probably a better swan song for the character than what kingdom of the crystal skull gave them and i and i get it and i understand it and i don't blame them but at the end of the day i just why couldn't they just have ended it with the last crusade why it was such a great ending to the series, and you had to make more movies. You know, money talks, bullshit walks, and they just want to run this into the fucking ground, man. I mean, I would love to own this in 4K. I think this would be awesome to own in 4K, but I just don't need the fourth movie. I'm never going to watch it again. Like, that fourth movie is really terrible. It's just a bunch of CGI garbage And it's trying to be an an Indiana Jones movie, or I should say it's trying to pretend like it's remembering what an Indiana Jones movie is. But in fact, it doesn't. It just pales in comparison to the other three. Ah, man. I love Indiana Jones, but why do they got to continue the the franchise? Just end it. It was perfect as, as, as a trilogy, and you had to go and put Shia LaBeouf and CGI weird monkeys and alien skulls in there and... Man, they really did nuke the fridge, damn it. <laughs> Fuck. Jesus. They really did, man. God damn it. <sighs> a fifth movie. Is a fifth movie really going to get rid of the stink of the fourth? Hell, it may just enhance it. <sighs> Stick with the trilogy. Trust me. Y- you won't regret it. Trust me. Indian Jones has seen better days. And they ain't with Shia LaBeouf. <laughs> That's for damn sure. Oh, man. Some really interesting stuff just finding in the section here. Some Marvel love, Phantasm love, Indiana Jones 4K love, and a few things in between. Not bad, dare I say. Not bad at all. All right. Let's head out. Well, Best Buy kind of delivered. Sort of, a little bit. Yeah, they, they did, all things considered, man. I mean, 
We did get a lot of new release love here. I mean, not as much Steelbook love as we were hoping for. But then again, we did see a little bit of it, so that's not bad. I mean, they did have MCU collection love. We finally got to see, well, I mean, gee, finally got to see that Indiana Jones 4K set. I mean, Lord knows it took them God knows how long to actually get the damn thing here but yeah, we finally saw it man and they also have a lot, a lot of sales for some of the for physical media including hey turkey baster love completely ruined thanksgiving for me Ugh. yes they have a decent amount of stuff but then again i mean it's not really a huge physical media release week so you can't really fault them but you also really can't fault them because their stuff is actually selling guys i mean it really is i mean i showed you the dr strange love 4k which is also now uh their steelbooks are sold out i mean physical media is selling here and that is only a good thing i mean best buy is never going to be what it used to be okay it's it's really not i mean you remember back in the day where you go into best buy and there was rows and rows of releases and and all the indie love and there was so much stuff that you can see and those days are just gone you're never going to get those days back man but it's nice to see stuff here selling, and the reason why it's nice to see it selling here, guys, is because physical media has taken such a pounding over and over and over again. It really has, and a lot of these stores just aren't supplying what they used to because they just don't think it's going to sell. So seeing it really sell here at Best Buy gives me hope that they will bring more physical media love in. They're already starting to bring in more steelbooks and more 4K editions and limited editions like that Phantasm set. I mean, they're slowly bringing stuff in, but... It, it it takes time you know i mean sometimes it only takes a little bit for physical media to fall and these stores are a great way to supply physical media to people who aren't really aware of it as much as you and i are and so to see it sell is really heartwarming to know that that there is still a place for physical media in the marketplace there is if you're willing to put it out, if you're willing to get the additions in, people are buying it, and I'm glad to see it here. That's for sure, man. Physical media love that needs all the help it can get, and so I'm glad that it's still doing its business here at the Beast, guys. Damn glad for it, and hope you are glad for all that physical media love. I sure as hell am. How about we head home and finish the video? All right, everybody. That'll do it for the Blu-ray and dvd out and about video this week and not as bad as i thought it was going to be to be fair i i knew everyone was going to have mortal kombat i mean that was pretty much guaranteed it's such a big movie such a big release everyone's going to have it but then i thought okay most people are probably going to have wrath of man but what else are we going to get and I was actually kind of surprised. We saw some indie love. We saw some collection sets. So it wasn't a complete wait. It was just two titles. We saw a wider range of stuff. And again, there is certain weeks where you're going to have a couple of big name titles and then everything else sort of falls by the wayside. And then you're going to get a little bit more plentiful. You see a variety of stuff. It changes week to week, man. And I wasn't quite sure what this week was going to bring us, but I was actually pleasantly surprised. All things considered, didn't turn out so bad, man. Hopefully you guys picked up something good this week or something worth checking out. Definitely let me know. As far as I'm concerned, well, you have a little bit of a stack, guys. So the first thing I picked up actually was through Amazon. And it's another one of those Paramount releases and more John Travolta love in the collection. And that is none other than... The General's Daughter. And now, I actually saw this in the movie theater when it came out, and it's not exactly the most memorable John Travolta film you'll ever see in your life, but I liked it. It was a good little dramatic mystery thriller yarn that I really enjoyed, man. I thought he was really good in it. I thought Madeline Stowe was fantastic. And these are, these are sort of the type of stuff that Travolta was making at this point. Movies like this and Basic and other films sort of in that range that he, he was doing. And I really appreciated a film like this. It doesn't light the world on fire. It's not the most amazing film ever, as even far as thrillers are concerned. But... I thought, as far as John Travolta is concerned, look, John Travolta has made some really shit movies. 
Then again, he's made better movies, but this one I remember very fondly, and I didn't pay that much on Amazon, so I'm like, I'm just gonna give it a go, man. And I gotta give Paramount a lot of credit here, because, man, this is such a... I wouldn't say a mundane movie because it's not a mundane movie, but it's such it's it's not a movie that actually inspires everybody to go out and buy it. So here I'm thinking there's not much special features on this thing, and I I would be wrong, man. I mean, there's commentary, there's behind the scenes theatrical trailer, uh, deleted scenes, including an alternate ending. I'm like Jesus, man. I mean, this is really cool, and man, Paramount. It's kind of funny because when Paramount started doing this line of movies, right, they were putting out all of these titles that they have in their catalog, and I'm thinking, oh, they're, they're just putting it out for the sake of putting it out, but no, they're actually putting it out and putting some love behind these releases. Even average movies like The General's Daughter get a good release. Kind of crazy to think about it, but yeah, Paramount has definitely been hitting it out of the park, and so I'm happy to actually pick up a movie like this because... You know, not every movie is going to be a blockbuster winner. Not every movie is going to be the greatest thing in the world. Sometimes you just want to sit down and have a nice little thriller yarn on a rainy day. And General's Daughter, it does that, man. Glad I picked this one up. It's been a long time since I've seen it, but I do love Trip Travolta. What can I tell you? Now, the next few titles... Well, Shout Factory was having a sale. Okay, they were having a sale recently, and I took advantage of it. I kind of was looking at it, and I didn't think I was going to pick up anything. And I'm like, oh, there's about three things that I want. So I figured, how why not pull the trigger, man? And the first thing that I got from the sale is the collector's edition Blu-ray release of The Shadow with Alec Baldwin. Wow, man. Boy, I haven't seen this one in a long time, but good sale price. And man, I pulled the trigger. I love a movie like this, man. I mean, if you remember what they were doing with these sort of, uh, sort of almost like superhero movies in a, in a lot of ways back in the day, like sort of the the early '90s, you were you were getting stuff like, uh, like the Phantom, and and the Shadow, and and man, like the Rocketeer and stuff like that. Those were the days, man, when you you had sort of these these sort of actors doing these sort of roles, and it was supposed to be sort of a franchise, right? I mean, you go into a movie like The Shadow, you're not looking to make just one movie. You're looking to make a shitload of them, and with sequel potential up and down. And this movie never really caught on with audiences, but I always really loved it. I, I always love this character of the shadow i love alec baldwin here i love penelope ann miller i thought this was a really awesome film and i always love sort of the trench coat and the hat and and sort of the look that he has i always thought that was really amazing man i used to watch this movie back in the vhs days so this has major nostalgia factor for me and i've always wanted to pick it up i remember when it came out and i was like oh the shadow yeah, I do want that movie. And then other releases to get, other things happened, and movie just fell by the wayside. But I decided, man, if it's on a sale price like this, I'm going to give it a go. And I'm damn glad I did, man. I mean, new interviews, Alec Baldwin, uh, Penelope Ann Miller, the the writer, director of photography, theatrical trailer. I mean, there is is some good stuff here as far as special features are concerned. And it's just nice to have not only more Alec Baldwin love, but more sort of um, interesting superhero tales. I gotta admit, man, I mean, we are living in a renaissance of superheroes. And you tend to forget all the movies that came before it that sort of paved the way to get to where we are now. You know, movies like uh, Meteor Man, or like I said, The Phantom, or The Shadow, um, oh my god, a blank man. I mean, all, all, all those movies, man. And you just for, forget that all these little movies sort of paved the way for the big budget stuff that we have now, man. 
I'd actually love to see them do some sort of remake, reimagining of The Shadow. I think it would kind of be about time to do it, man. I mean, I love the movie, but I'd love to see them do a new reinvention of it. I think it would be cool, actually, but, I mean, this movie's classic. Especially for, uh, for a 90s kid like me. This is pretty classic. So I did pick up that. The second in the sale that I picked up was actually a little steelbook love, and it was for a great price, man. That is none other than Platoon. Man, did I want to pick this thing up. Look at that. That's a cool steelbook. I love that. Very eerie. I, I love the art on the back as well. This this is pretty cool, man. I, I really do love love this steelbook. I thought, man, for a great price, was I was getting for it, I had to pick it up. And I love the movie. I mean, the movie's um, amazing. I've always been a fan of Oliver Stone. And I love his catalog of stuff, and Platoon is a great movie. Not only is it just a great exercise in acting, I mean, everybody here is, is awesome, man. I mean, Tom Berenger and, and you name it, everybody's amazing here. But it's just a fantastic war movie. I mean, it's one of the best war movies that has been made. I mean, I put Platoon up there with... Saving Private Ryan, and Hamburger Hill, and Apocalypse Now, a lot of movies that I put up there, man, and Platoon is one of the really great ones, man, it's, it's just really the, the, the casualties of war, and the idea of your, of your psyche, and your sacrifice, and I just love this movie, this movie is amazing, and I didn't have it in the collection, and I'm like, ooh, Steelbook Love? I had to go for it, man. I had to. A platoon Steelbook? Oh, yeah. It was well worth it, guys. Now, last but certainly not least within the Great Shout Factory Sale Love is one that I haven't seen in forever. And way back in the VHS, it's been decades since I have seen this movie. And I didn't even realize that Shout had put out a version of this movie until I ended up actually checking out the sale. I'm like, holy shit. This movie? Man, I, I I had to, and that is none other than On Golden Pond. And On Golden Pond, the collector's edition, Catherine Hepburn, Henry Fonda, Jane Fonda, when life is at its finest, when love is at its fullest. Oh, man, man, do I love this movie. Why do I love On Golden Pond? Actually, it's one of my mother's favorite movies of all time. I am serious. She loves this movie. She really, really loves this movie, man. And I remember watching it on VHS with her, and she just loves Jane Fonda. She loves old school actors like like Hepburn and, and Henry Fonda. And this was one of those movies where it was a tear jer jerker. My mother, the waterworks coming down, man. And I always loved it, and it got to me because it got to her. And I, I never even knew that a version it was even out there on Blu-ray. Never. And so when this was like on the site, I was like, "Oh my God, this is amazing! I I have to grab this. This is a this is awesome." And the special features here, audio commentaries, featurettes, trailers. I mean, there's a lot of great stuff here. Man, they don't make them, like, on Golden Pond anymore. They really don't. I mean, it's movies like this or Murphy's Romance that I, I love back in the day, uh, Steel Magnolias. My God, I mean, there's, there's so many of them. Uh, term, Terms of Endearment. I mean, I look at those movies the same way I look at on Golden Pond as movies that are just... Not only are they a master class in acting, but they're also very heartfelt, heartwarming, sentimental tales that really pull at your heartstrings, and they do it in the best ways possible, man. And On Golden Pond is, is just amazing. I, I love this movie, and wow, never thought I'd actually ever own it on physical media, especially on Blu-ray, but that's why you check out sales. You never quite know what you're going to find, man. Things like On Golden Pond wild man though yes i did pick up that and last but certainly not least for what i got they actually had recently a kino lorber sale and 
I mean, I've kind of been wary on Kino Lorber sales. And the reason why I have been is because you guys have been sending me a lot of Kino Lorber love. Like, there's a lot of stuff I was going to order that you guys sent me. And so I'm like, ah, I don't know what to get in a Kino Lorber sale because I don't know what you guys might g give me next. But I decided, you know, if I'm going to pull the trigger on anything, I'm going to do it on this one. And I'm glad I, I did. And that is none other than Link. Yes, Link. Elizabeth Shue, Terrence Stamp, directed by Richard Franklin, an experiment in terror. Yes, I love this movie, man. Sort of um, uh, killer chimpanzee ape movies, man. I, I tell you, I really do love these type of flicks, man. I mean, there's cheesy ones out there like Shockma, which is ridiculous, but I tend, tend to like it, man. I mean, you have really great ones that come out years later, like Mighty Joe Young, which is not exactly a killer or a, you know, a movie, but he does eventually, like, end up going postal and everything. I mean, you have ones out there nowadays, like Rampage and everything, so the, the genre has continued on, put it that way, man. And I do really love Link. I, I love Elizabeth Shue here. I love her relationship with, with the monkey and, and how that sort of develops and morphs and how it turns deadly. I, I love it. It's a sort of a science experiment gone wrong. I, I always have loved this movie, man. And it was on sale. I was like, oh my God, I don't have Link. I gotta get this. And so this is a great one for the collection, man. I mean, I love these type of movies. Like I'm a fan of the King Kong movies. And I mean, even even like something like Monkey Shines, I'm a fan of. So I do love these sort of killer animal style movies and when nature fights back i happen to really love those type of movies man i mean that's why i love the planet Apes movie as much as i do so link is definitely right down my alley man so mm. kino lover love gotta gotta love it man and got to love the pickups this week nothing crazy groundbreaking exactly but some solid pickups for some solid sales that I found, and you want to know what? As a physical media lo lover, can you really beat it? And before I let you guys go, I wanted to have a discussion with you guys. Now, it's not going to technically be about movies or physical media. It's going to be about the channel. So, if you follow me on Twitter, and I know a lot of you don't out there, but if you do, well, you got a really interesting, surprising tweet almost a week ago. And basically, I said I was going to end the channel. I was thinking about en ending it. I, I was done. And why? Why was I done with the channel? Why was I just over it all? Last week, trying to get the video up was extremely frustrating. Extremely. And I had a lot of difficulties. And so much so that I was like, is this even worth doing at this point? I was so incredibly just angry and I was just, I was just a, a ball of nerves and I just really didn't like the, the fact that it had happened the way it did. And it got to me. And in fact, I'm going to be 100% with you guys. This whole time with the pandemic has really taken a huge toll on me. And it's really affected me mentally. My mental state has been pounded by this pandemic. It really has, man. Especially now. Now that everything is opening back up a lot more and there's a lot of movies coming out and it's a barrage of things happening, it's a lot of demand on my time and there's a lot of demand from you guys of like, hey, do this video and do that video and you should do this one and I'm, I want you to do this and why aren't you doing that? And there's a lot of, a lot of push and pull that I'm getting and at a certain point, you guys got to understand that I get very frustrated with things very fast and that 
on top of trying to do YouTube and having fun with it, I'm also working a full-time job. I'm trying to, you know, help my mother. I'm trying to spend time with my loved ones. I'm trying to plan videos, spend time with my friends outside of doing YouTube. And you also remember, I'm the only one really doing this for me. I don't hire somebody out to do the editing or anything like that. It's it's all me, man, on top of the promotion and everything like that. So it's like a one-man army trying to literally configure so much stuff within a 24-hour period on top of trying to sleep and eat and pay bills and it it just one thing on top of another essentially i mean i mean truly it is in some ways there's a lot of other youtubers that have more struggles than i do and god bless them for doing what they're able to do and sometimes i have a lot more on my plate than some people that are more popular than me and you just guys got to understand it. But at the same time, I always told you guys, I always told you guys that this channel was never meant to last a really long time. It never was. And I always told you guys there there was some point where I was going to end this. I mean, truly, there, there was. There was always going to be a point where I was going to say, I'm done. I never knew when that was going to be. I just knew that it was never meant to be a forever thing. And I've always said to you guys numerous times, by the way, I've always said to you that this is fun. And it's when it's no longer fun, I'm just not going to do it anymore. And this is not, for me, this is not a business. This is not a business transaction with you guys. This is not, you know, a thing where... You know, I'm I'm using you guys for money. That's that that's not what this is. It's never what it was meant to, to be, and it's never what it's going to be. And there was serious considerations of this being the end. I mean, it truly. And I've had a lot of discussions with my girlfriend. I've had discussions with John, with Nick with Bob, I've had major discussions with them and discussions that I've never even told you guys about. And it's it's also kind of interesting because my time on YouTube has been man, it's it's been a roller coaster. I mean, it, it really has. And in a lot of ways, I consider myself an outsider of the Bluetooth community. I mean, I've gotten support, a lot of great support from a lot of people out there who do physical media, you know, movie stuff on their channels. I mean, people like mid-level media who has really supported me and obviously Big Pauly, uh, Noah, uh, Unwrap Them Movies, and a lot of them who have watched the videos and have gone out of their way to comment, and I, I appreciate it beyond words. I really do. But there's a lot of times where I thought at a certain point that I was going to be embraced more by the community. And I love the community. I mean, I also got to be real and say that the community is very much like high school. I mean, it, it really is, man. I mean, it very much is like high school in a lot of ways. I mean, it's very clicky. It really is. If you're not part of the cool kids, if you're not, you know, part of the the right crowd, then you're not getting in, really. And I and I love a lot of people, and I watch a lot of people. I mean, Cinema Sickness, Wet Movie One, Cool Duder, Durant Cinema, Piz Out, Dead Pit. I mean, I mean, I watch a lot of them, man. And it's it's interesting because I thought I was gonna be embraced a little bit more, but it kind of feels like it's always competition and that I maybe I'm not embraced because maybe I make too long of videos. You know, maybe I'm, I'm not on other people's live streams. Like maybe I should, 
you know, I, I don't go out of my way to, to, to do, you know, um, live physical media battles on other people's channels. I mean, who knows why I'm not as embraced as the way maybe I was hoping down the line it was going to be. But then again, in some ways, I've always been an outsider. I mean, back in high school or just school in general, I was never part of the jocks. I, I, I never got the girls. I I wasn't part of any of the cool kids, you know, or the goth kids or anybody else for that matter. I did my own thing. And so I just felt like my time on YouTube has been very, at times, I thought it was going to be easier and it's been a struggle. But then again, that's YouTube in general. I thought I thought things were going to be a lot easier. And I've learned so much within my time of doing YouTube. And how this is not as easy as it looks. And there's so much complications to it. And it really is tough to me, man. It really is. And so, at times, I felt alone doing YouTube. And at times, I felt like like i'm that maybe i'm i'm not as good as i should be and that i'm not as good as everybody else and i'm a failure at this and why am i even trying and i'm not as good as this person or that person and you know it gets it gets to your mental state man it gets to your mental state and it affects you and it really it really hits you and I've had a lot of those moments, more than I can honestly count, man. And so, this, this has been a struggle in a big, bad way. And there's been times when I've done a lot of these videos, and I've done the out and abouts, and I'm literally at a store for like six to eight minutes talking about a movie. And I have like screaming kids in my ear, and you know, people that are looking at me and, and, you know, getting in my way. And I get so, so balled up and angry that I, I just, I just say to myself, is this, is this even worth it? I mean, I mean, really, why am I doing this? And it's, it's just gotten so tough and so frustrating and it's, it's been moments when I literally wanted to just take my head and bash it against a wall. But then again, there's moments when I love doing this. And there's moments when I put up a video for you guys. And when I'm filming that it, sometimes it feels like it all goes away. Like it's just all like just washes away. And, and that's, that, that's an amazing feeling. And... I, you know, it's it's sort of odd to me because I got to admit to you guys that in my life, I've had a lot of moments of failure. I've had a lot of moments of, of, of feeling like a loser and feeling like, like I can't do anything right. And I have... I have screwed up my life so badly over the years. You really have no idea, man, how many times I've I've really had opportunities that I've just squandered and moments where I think I could have been so much better and I've I've disappointed myself and disappointed others and people have been disappointed in me. And the one thing, the one thing that I can say that I've actually been successful at crazy enough in my life has been this channel. I mean, that's nuts to, to, to me. The fact that like this channel has actually been successful in even the smallest of ways. I, I never thought that was going to happen, man. I thought this was going to be a failure. And, and, you know, maybe in some ways it has been. Maybe it still is. I don't know. But the the fact that I've maintained this thing for as long as I have has been wild to me. It's been such a wild and crazy ride. And I'm not perfect. 
I haven't done everything right. I've made a crap ton of mistakes and I'll make a crap ton more, to be honest with you. I'll make a shitload more. And, and yet I feel like I've accomplished something that I never thought I would have done. And so it, it's crazy and it's wild to me that, that, that I've been able to, to maintain this for as long as I have. And, and when I have thought about ending this channel, when I have thought about saying goodbye to it, there's a part of me that says, I, I don't want to let this thing go because, because there's been moments when I have literally been at the bottom and this channel has picked me back up and it's you guys that have picked me up. And there's been so many great times and mo moments in my life from just this channel alone. And, and so I've thought about pulling the trigger. I've thought about, you know, saying goodbye and, I'm not ready to do that yet. There will be some point when I'm going to say goodbye. But it's not today. It's not today. And, you know, I feel like I still got things to do on YouTube. And, and I'm just still wanting to have fun with this and do this. And, you know there will be a moment where I will, I will walk away. There will be a moment where I will sort of say goodbye, but I can't do it now. I can't. And I just, I love movies and I love physical media too much. And I, I'm not ready to say goodbye yet. I'm, I'm still going to continue this, not only for me, but for you guys as well, who went out of your way to support me. And so through all of the frustrations, through all of the difficulties, through all the moments when you're just stuck in the mud and you want to just quit, this channel has picked me up. And I I can't I can't quit on it yet. I, I, I can't. I'm not a quitter. And I I I don't wanna I don't wanna quit on you guys. And I don't wanna quit on me. So I'm not going to. But the weird thing about all this, guys, is the fact that it's actually my birthday this week. I'm serious. It's actually my birthday. Like, like July 15th is my birthday. T truth be told, J July 15th is my birthday, man. And I turned 39. How crazy is that? I mean, I'm, I'm almost heading towards midlife crisis level. <laughs> and I'm kind of almost there. I mean... I mean, I've had moments where I was almost at a midlife crisis level. I'll get there eventually. I'm not quite at that level of midlife crisis at this point, but boy, boy, it's just crazy and maddening to think that I'm turning 39, the fact that my birthday is right around the corner, and I've had so much, I've had so much craziness in my life, and the the one thing that I can hold up high in my life and say it's been an accomplishment has been this channel. And so on my birthday, on my birthday week, do I really want to say goodbye to this channel? And no, I, I don't want to do it, guys. And so I'm I'm sticking around. You, you got me for a little while longer. I don't know how long you've got me for, guys. Truth be told, you may have me for... Six months, you may have me for a year, you may have me for five years, ten years, I have no idea. But you're stuck with me for a little longer. I hate to say it, guys, you kind of are. Uh, I, I know, you got my weird sort of crazy sensibility mind. I've kind of lost it, but then again, did I ever really have it in the first place? Probably not, guys. <laughs> but, ah, uh, yes. Oh, man. So... I just wanted to address it with you guys. I wanted to let you know that, you know, honestly, I thought about it and I thought long and hard about it, but I'm going to continue this crazy wild journey at least for a little bit longer and see where it may or may not take me, man. I don't know. I mean, I am having fun 
And as long as I'm having fun, I'm going to keep on doing it. I'm having fun with you guys. And you guys prop me up in the best ways possible. So, I'm not about to call it quits. At least not yet. But uh, we'll, we'll see how long it goes, guys. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, definitely give it the thumbs up. And if you're new to the channel, welcome. Check out the other Blu-ray and DVD out and about videos that I do every single week. Check out the movie reviews with my friends. Movie hunting like Dollar Tree hunts. Um, live streams. Pick up videos and a hell of a lot more. If you are a lover of movies and physical media, hit subscribe and become part of the Film Fan Nation. And one of the reasons why I'm sticking around even doing this is because of you guys. Yes, you, 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 yeah, you in the back. Yeah, I, I actually kind of like you too. <laughs> so, I like all of you guys. I mean, seriously, I really do. You guys are amazing and you guys have... Man, you guys have went out of your way to show me so much love and so much support that I never thought was ever possible. I mean, I'm not the most celebrated physical media YouTuber of all time. I don't have, you know, uh, 10,000 subscribers or 30,000, 50. I, I don't have that many subscribers. And maybe I don't because I make long two, three hour videos. Maybe... I'm I'm an outsider. Maybe I don't do as many videos as I should every single week. Maybe. I mean, I have only a certain amount of subscriber love out there that I have. And it's not the, the, the biggest. And a lot of people have surpassed me. A lot of people are better than me. But I'm okay with my little corner of the world. I, I really am, man. Because you guys are some of the best subscribers out there and you really prop me up in the best of ways and I can't thank you enough. When I'm down, you guys pick me up and it really means more to me than you can ever possibly know. So thank you so, so much, man. You give the love to me and I hope I give the love right back to you. So thank you, thank you so much. And Keep up to date with everything I'm doing through Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Film Fan 108. Keep up to date with everything I'm doing, plus special pictures and videos I do from time to time on social media as well. When I, well, when I find the time to. <laughs> so, yes, I do that. And also, if you want to send the channel any subscriber or fan mail love, if you want to do that, uh, movie posters, care packages, physical media love, whatever you guys are interested in sending, you can send it to the P.O. Box in the description below. I did this P.O. Box for you guys. You guys went out of your way to say to me, Hey, by the way, we want to send you stuff. Where can we send it? And I decided I'm going to do this for you guys. And you guys have not disappointed me. You have sent me some of the most amazing things. Stuff that I don't have in the collection that you guys have went out of your way to, to do. And it's been wild. It's been amazing, and it's been totally worth it, and I've loved every single second. It's like it's like be, being a kid at Christmas, almost, like opening up packages from you guys. It's been amazing, and you guys have sent me some awesome love, and if you want to send more, you're more than welcome to. It's not expected, but it is definitely appreciated. That is for damn sure, guys, so I really appreciate the love from each and every one of you, so thank you beyond words, and... I will see you back next week for a brand new out and about adventure. Take care, everybody, and remember, happy hunting.